remaining same topics are a few now and a very important topic to be discussed today by Dr. Vinit Vakade. He will be talking on bowel preparation in colorectal surgeries. I welcome Dr. Vinit Vakade. Probably he is from Solapur only, no? So you might not be needing any um, introduction over here. Thank you. Come out. Dr. Vinit Vakade. Uh, good morning, uh, res uh, everyone, respected faculty and delegates. Uh, at the outset, let me thank the International uh, Society of Coloproctology for having me here, and especially Dr. Ghatore, sir. <coughs> A few disclaimers. Uh, I'll be discussing bowel preparation before colorectal surgery. Uh, is it really required? Uh, that is a hot topic if you go to any uh, colorectal conference there will be at least one debate on whether mechanical bowel preparation for and against mechanical bowel preparation uh, as a disclaimer i would like to put i don't do any i have no experience of doing any benign anorectal diseases so i don't do them so whatever it will be it will be relation to mostly malignant colorectal diseases and uh, uh, surgeries related to them so, uh, what has been the traditional teaching? Traditional teaching has always been that mechanical bowel preparation before colorectal surgery is a must. Uh, why? We were told that it reduces anastomotic leaks, reduces skin and soft tissue infections post-surgery, makes handling of the colon easier and reduces spillage. In fact, uh, my professor, uh, Professor S.K. Mathur, where during our surgical gastroenterology days, used to always uh, ask us, Ki, have you seen the last tools? And we were supposed to see the last tools yourself that the patient has passed and write it on paper. And if possible, click a photograph and then show it to sir. And if it is absolutely water, then only he will take the patient for surgery, otherwise he will postpone the surgery. So th that is what people are fanatical about bowel preparation at that time. Now we have to see, does it really stand the scrutiny of time? Is it really uh, uh, stand to evidence-based medicine today? So what was the rationale of MBP? There are several potential perceived advantages of mechanical bowel preparations. Remember the word perceived advantages because at that point we did not have any robust evidence for the same. So it was uh, historically said that the colon and the rectum especially has a very high bacterial load and the content of the feces which comes in contact with the newly formed anastomosis would actually harm the anastomosis and increase re leak rates and thereby leading to a defunctioning stoma. A mechanical bowel preparation was also thought to clear the lumen of stools and leave only gas. Theoretically, this would decrease the intraluminal pressure and the hearts, it was thought that the heart stools, if they press on the anastomosis, they may cause ischemia at the anastomosis, mechanical pressure at the anastomosis and that may lead to disruption of a newly formed anastomosis before adequate strength has set in. So that was the rationale given for MBP. In laparoscopic surgery, when especially in the early part of laparoscopic colorectal surgery, it was said that empty colon may be easier to manipulate than a full colon because as we all know, the space is limited in laparoscopic surgery. And uh, sometimes when the lesion is really very small and it is not a very big lesion, the surgeon has to actually palpate the colon to get the lesion. So in that uh, situation, if there are heart feces in the colon, it may be difficult to localize the lesion. So that, that was the rationale for mechanical bowel preparation. Now what are the agents which are available? Mainly they are osmotic agents which act by pulling water into the colonic lumen and retaining water inside the colonic lumen. Uh, the mechanism is dependent on the osmolality age of the agent. So the osmolality agent will the agents will be hyperosmolar as compared to the serum and the, thereby leading water shift from the bowel wall to the bowel lumen and that uh, and thereby causing diarrhea. So this is just basic for residents. So what are the available agents? Now if you see there are two types of available agents for mechanical bowel preparation. One are sodium uh, phosphate or sodium picophosphate both agents that is exilite and everything. The, the advantages of uh, exilite or sodium phosphate based uh, preparations are it has a very low volume of administration. So typically exilite you will give in 500 or 400 ml soda, limca or water whatever it is. It was our uh, policy to give it in limca 400 because it has got a very bad taste. So if you give it in limca the patient feels that it is very palatable and they drink it nicely. And also that limca will give some electrolytes also as we will see further it can cause significant electrolyte disturbances especially sodium picophosphate solutions. Or we used to to give it in soda if they are diabetic patients but uh, the problem was with uh, sodium picophosphate solutions was that it causes significant fluid and electrolyte disturbances and patients with compromised renal function hypercalcemia especially hypertensive patients there is a high incidence of renal failure and remember the sodium phosphate induced renal failure is irreversible in these patients so you can uh, so these patients may end up with a permanent dialysis and of course it can lead to lot of trouble 
so uh, the newer agents which were used the most popular is polyethylene glycol it's a non absorbable osmotic agent uh, there are two types of pg solutions basically we use plain pg solutions here they are relatively very well tolerated it is not associated with fluid or electrolyte problems the only problem what we find in clinical practice with pg is that it has to given in a large volume typically 4 liters is described in textbooks we don't give 4 liters at least 2 liters we give but even 2 liters of water is not very well compliant patients are not very well compliant with 2 liters of water many are reluctant many have vomiting after that and also and and so forth so uh, that is a major disadvantage but uh, the problem uh, the advantage with pg is that it can be safely given in renal failure patients and it doesn't cause electrolyte imbalance it is nephro safe it can be give it can be given in patients whom the fluid shifts are not advisable that is patients with mi congestive cardiac failure patients with hepatic disease whom there is al already some ascites so in these patients polyethylene glycol is uh, safe infants and children also where they can land up with di with dehydration very fast so in these uh, patients also pg is the agent of choice but if you really see the evidence regarding efficacy of bowel preparation leave the side effects apart if you see only the efficacy of bowel preparation the studies seem to say that they are both the same no one is superior to the other so ultimately it is between your choice of agent your patient profile you have to choose now very important is the role of oral antibiotics now as we'll see further whether uh, uh, mechanical bowel preparation is yes it is controversial and we, as we'll see further what is the evidence for no mechanical bowel preparation but when it comes to use of oral antibiotics the evidence is very robust and multiple trials there were two main trials uh, which showed that large high volume trials as we'll discuss further they showed that uh, oral antibiotic preparation does reduce anastomotic leak and ssi rates so Uh, why it was because the colon and the rectum has got a very high bacterial load so the first study which came out was in 2002 it was a very large study more than 4000 patients they documented the reduction of surgical site infections from 17% to 5% which was statistically significant purposefully i have not included the entire studies because it will be very boring so i have just included the gist of whatever studies are people anybody who is interested can read further so there was another last study which uh, which was a meta analysis which complemented this study and which said that the combination of oral non absorbable antibiotics plus intravenous antibiotics also cause a great reduction in colorectal uh, infections after colorectal surgery and the reduction if you add iv antibiotics prophylactically the one day prior to give iv antibiotics also the reduction in the infection rate is as high as 43% then again there was a last study which was done conducted by canon et al which is supposed to be the largest study included almost 10000 patients so this study again documented that there's a 57% decrease in surgical site infections if you use preoperative oral antibiotics or luminal antibiotics in patients who are undergoing colorectal surgery so the bottom line was that oral antibiotics do help and there is now it's level 1 evidence that they do help because we have two meta analysis which have come to a similar conclusion so classically becomes a grade 1 recommendation or grade a recommendation now oral antibiotic preparation classically that is given in the textbooks is nikons and condon preparation or the regimen that is called you give 1 gram or now neomycin oral i don't think is available we are not using it we are using either erythromycin or metronidazole It's classically it is given at 2 pm 3 pm and 10 pm before the day of surgery assuming that the surgery is 8 am tomorrow morning Uh, nowadays we are more and more my choice uh, my agent of choice is rifaximin because again metronidazole erythromycin sometimes is not tolerated well by the patients especially at a higher dose they tend to develop vomiting nausea and vomiting before surgery nausea before surgery you will be upset and your anesthetist will be scared so uh, generally what i tend to use is i tend to use rifaximin the evidence for rifaximin is not grade 1 or grade a recommendation the ref evidence of rifaximin is only in a few small uh, randomized trials it is not as robust as it is for metronidazole but still it is better tolerated than metronidazole so my personal preference is rifaximin now if you read the latest literature or is they will always say that what is the need for mechanical bowel preparation always there is a debate in conferences that there is no evidence for mechanical bowel preparation now why is it so it came with the eras protocol now as we are all aware eras is now the new kid on the block that everybody wants eras eras enhanced recovery after surgery and the eras one of the major proponents of eras was omitting mechanical bowel preparation because it uh, there was found that it actually delays bowel function and delays discharge in these patients now we'll see what they meant 
so uh, there were few clinical trials which are conducted especially in france and one trial last trial was conducted in the us which said that there may be increased infectious complications for patient who underwent mbp and the rationale that they have given in those trials if you read those papers is that it makes the stools liquid and if you have a liquid stool in the colon the risk of spillage is more than having a solid stool in the colon so that is the rationale that is given by these people that because liquid stools increase spillage there may be increase or uh, increase in the infective complications if you prepare the bowel they have they have also reported that uh, the return of bowel function is delayed if you give mechanical bowel preparation because of fluid and electrolyte disturbances then whether you don't give mechanical bowel preparation and the hospital stay tends to be shorter so there was large multicentral trials and a cochrane review basically they documented that there was no difference in anastomotic leak rates or wound infections if you give mechanical bowel preparation as well as you don't give mechanical bowel preparation this was done in 2011 there was another trial which was done in 2020 which again documented that there is no difference whether you give mechanical bowel preparation you don't give mechanical bowel preparation the anastomotic leak rates and the uh, infection rates are the same so based on these conclusions and in taking into account eras protocols and uh, eras uh, philosophy if you will the conclusion was that uh, many societies now recommend omission of mechanical bowel preparation especially american college of uh, coloproctology i think they don't now recommend mechanical bowel preparation even in the uk it's not recommended europe it's not recommended now any more for colorectal surgery however is there a role for mechanical bowel preparation in the era of evidence based medicine yes there may be some exceptions and which these trials also acknowledge so if you really want to go evidence based there are some exceptions where sometimes you have to do a intraoperative colonoscopy the lesion is so small you have to want to do intraop colonoscopy or you have documented lesion below but there is suspicious of a suspicion of a synchronous lesion above which you are not able to assess because the lower lesion was maybe obstructive you want to do a on table colonoscopy then of course you need to prepare the bowel because then a on table colonoscopy will not be possible if it's a very small lesion less than 2 cm it's not really visible from the surface you have to palpate then of course you need to be have a prepared colon so these patients were excluded from these trials and meta analysis and so uh, in these situations yes even the evidence based medicine says that uh, mbp should be used so uh, there is now recent evidence that if there was no mechanical bowel preparation but is it really practiced so this was the survey which was conducted in 2022 and 96% of the american surgeons still practice mechanical bowel preparation 99% of the uk surgeons practice mechanical bowel preparation despite their society saying that it's not needed so in very highly highly protocolized countries like switzerland and new zealand still almost 50 60% are using still so uh, i mean though there is evidence uh, we are uh, it's difficult to change and i will tell you why this is the indian western poop little chota 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 and this is indian pooping we we are wholesale producers of shit westerners are retail producers of shit so our colon because of our diet high fiber everything our colons and rectum tend to be very loaded westerners chintu 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 they may not or may or may not prepare but for us i think indian context especially in our place <laughs> they are wholesale producers of shit so better prepare the colon otherwise you will land up in trouble <coughs> so what is my personal policy in no mechanical bowel preparations in right sided resections i don't prepare the bowel because stools tend to be liquid no need of bowel preparation in segmental colectomy is up to the splenic flexure so if you are going up to the splenic flexure you don't pre prepare the bowel beyond the splenic flexure yes partially obstructed patients so if you have a ct scan which is showing a slightly even dilated proximal colon or bowel you don't prepare because as i said it makes if the it's not completely emptied it makes the stools very liquid and liquid stools are difficult to handle than solid stools because solid stool you can just push back or push forward liquid stools will keep on spilling in your operative field and it will keep make the field dirty and all all sort of problems and if i want to have a planned apr there is no need to prepare the bowel if you are planning a apr you you will always create a stoma if it's a small lesion especially and in a female pelvis in a male pelvis i will prepare because it's again difficult now mechanical bowel preparation where i always do left sided lesions always i do if you i want to go do a lower ultra low resections especially what i have found is that if you try to fire a circular stapler and if there is shit in the rectum the circular stapler does not go the shit tends to go in those pin holes of that circular stapler and then it firing is difficult and you are always scared what will happen when you fire 
<coughs> and if the stapler misfires it is a loss of 21000 rupees and in a solapur setting it is the for you have to forfeit your surgical charges because that is what you earn as surgical charges in solapur so uh, it is very difficult so in lar if i want to use a circular stapler i will always prepare the bowel laparoscopic resections yes because i really find that it is difficult to handle the colon uh, uh, if you don't prepare the bowel and i will always prepare bowel in colorectal surgery uh, in laparoscopic surgery remember oral antibiotics are a must in all patients because as we said the evidence is really robust so take home message is it is clear clear that mbp does not uh, reduce ssi in elective colorectal surgeries but clinical evidence supports the use of uh, a mechanical bowel preparation adjunct to antibiotic bowel preparation and overwhelming the recent literature supports the use of oral antibiotic bowel preparation which is a must before any elective colorectal surgery thank you very much for your attention thank you Yeah, it was very nice talk, and uh, we Indians are big eaters and big uh, <laughs> bulk farming uh, shit is there definitely. <laughs> and this eras is actually, uh, if we consider the colonic uh, surgeries, this eras fails in Indian scenario because the pelvis of the Indian is comparatively small, and uh, because the bulk stools are there in the colon. and uh, it is very much necessary to prepare a bowel in indian scenario what about the clindamycin use uh, sir clindamycin again it was uh, t there is no evidence actually to use clindamycin if they say literature it because it's not allowed in the us they don't allow clindamycin because uh, of the problems with uh, uh, their antibiotic policies we have used previously but not very with the advent of rifaxi rifaximin we don't use sir because it is we want a luminal antibiotic clindamycin is still systemically absorbed so we don't want any systemic antibiotic to mess with the uh, antibiotic flora so we we generally tend to use uh, rifaximin now because it is not absorbed the evidence there, there are anecdotal reports of using clindamycin in the place of neomycin but uh, there is no robust evidence for this and uh, for how many days you give uh, rifaximin and what dose sir we give standard uh, one day only one day one day only pre operatively and what uh, uh, i have not gone in uh, 400 mg thrice a day thrice a day 400 mg thrice a day okay. uh, 550 mg preparations are there but again uh, sometimes they can cause little bit nausea vomiting so okay. we don't use 550 mg we we'll use 400 mg thrice a day and we'll keep the patient i i omitted that but we keep the patient on uh, liquid diet for one day prior oh, to surgery they recommend two days prior yes we we'll keep here one day prior to surgery we'll keep on liquid diet. yeah okay thank you very much it was okay. a nice uh, learning ladukar sir please go ahead thank congrats i think uh, we call ourselves colorectal surgeons but we are more or less proctologists only and what we require we have stopped giving any was since long time so mechanical bowel preparations we don't do at all whatever we give we give mild laxative you know we don't want to give even pegleg also because uh, that may cause some certain problems you know that overnight or midnight patients will call you i get this this problem distension abdomen vomiting so we are peaceful people we don't want anybody should disturb us in the midnight so we give mild laxative like lactitol two or three doses that is good enough and maximum you can restrict liquids earlier day so no new stool will be formed and whatever is there it will pass away and we are, we are not interested in colon and all those big surgery what cancer people are doing we are limiting to our rectum and anal canal if that is clear we are very happy thank you <coughs> thank you very much sir it was a nice talk and followed by that this is a uh, uh, previous it was a usual surgery but nowadays it has become bit unusual because the uh, pregnant population of india is now switching over to the uh, systematic labor conduction of labor and the lscs and so that there is less chances of perineary injury but still the problem do exist in the rural part of india where uh, we are coming across all the cases and uh, depending upon that this surgery is a very necessary surgery for us 
and this is a plastic surgery plastic repair just like and it will be useful to all general surgeon if they carry out it is very satisfying as far as the patient concerned and, and the patient worries are concerned so again block kya kare se Yes. So, uh, the objectives of this topic is to describe the normal perineum structure, define the perineal tear, and describe the four types of perineal tear and repair of the perineal tear in anal incontinence. Now, it is very clear that the anatomy part was done by Ganga Shankar yesterday. This is pubic bone, pubic symphysis. This is sacrum or coccyx these are the ischial tuberosities both the line joining are the ischio pubic rami this is very important part this is to uh, tuberosity ischial tuberosity now this of this much of the column this is completely divided into two part called as urogenital diaphragm with this the urogenital triangle is there and this is anal triangle this urogenital triangle is very important because as far as the structures are concerned it had got two membranes the superficial and deep membrane uh, the part and these fossa are very important superficial uh, part is very important as far as there are the structures the three structures are there that that we know uh, in female that is urethra and the vagina important and this is the anal triangle only which contains the anal canal and the rectum and anal canal now how the things are there if you uh, diagrammatically prepare this this is pubic symphysis this is again coccyx and this is ischial tuberosity there is the pubic actually the pubo coccyx the levator ana is uh, divided into three parts pubo coccyx ileo coccyx and ischio coccyx it is said that ischio ischio coccyx is a remnant it is just a vestigial uh, 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 muscle in uh, human beings but as far as the uh, other uh, 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 animals are concerned this is active in uh, in human beings pubo coccyx and ileo coccyx these are the two muscles now the muscle which starts from the pubic bone going to the coccyx is pubo coccyx right from the ileo tubus ramus this is from ileum it goes to the uh, coccyx is ileo coccyx this is a sim simple representation now these uh, these bone this pubo coccyx muscle is very important muscle which gives its modification there are certain modifications of the pubic coccyx and these modifications are very important and they are very easy to remember when the modification from the pubic coccyx gives to the urethra this is urethralis so this is called as pubo urethralis this uh, forms a part of the sphincter of the urethra and then there is from pubo vaginalis it is also a partial uh, formation of the constrictions uh, over the vagina this is pubo vaginalis and a very important muscle as far as the pubo rectalis is concerned uh, it surrounds around the rectum so it is the modification of the pubo coccyx this is important as far as the why we call it that pubo rectalis is a part of uh, levator ana but how it is formed it is from the pubo coccyx itself <coughs> now when you will be talking on the perineal body how the perineal body is formed perineal body is not a protuberant nodular structure we cannot palpate it by the hand but that is in between the that is a central part of the perineum there are the ten muscles which converge at the perineal body and these are the muscles of the pelvic diaphragm so pelvic diaphragm is formed by the uh, all the levator ana but the, out of that the two pubo coccyx they they are the part of the levator ana these are the important muscles of the pelvic diaphragm because pelvic diaphragm is there and below that there is perineum there is a membrane and there is a perineum so both the things should not be confused now the muscles of the perineum are there are two superficial transversalis two superficial transversus perineum these are the very important muscles of the perineal body these are the two superficial perineum this this and this and the, this deeper this part is called the perineal body this is in between the vagina and the anal canal over here so this part this is a central a central portion called as perineal body and then two deep transverse uh, transverse perineum which are below this but this lies in the deep membrane that is uh, when you divide it into fossa superficial and deep 
So in the deep perineal uh, fossa, this, uh, this is the deep transverse perina. But ideally, what we see over here is uh, in a superficial plane, there is superficial transverse perineal muscles. Then there are two bulbous spongious muscles. These are the bulbous spongious muscles. Then single external anal sphincter, the external anal sphincter is also there. And the smooth muscles of the longitudinal muscles of the coat of the anal colas out. Oh, so whole of the 10 muscles are contributing for the formation of the perineal body. The skeletal muscle sphincters associated with the urethra, vagina and anus, they are also included in this, but they are partially. Now, this is the same thing which is, uh, uh, is uh, discussed more. They are the bulbous cavernous muscle, but important are these are the transverse perineal muscle. This is the puborectalis muscle. This is puborectalis muscles. Now this is again, uh, uh, but uh, we won't discuss it more because we are already talked about this is the pubic sympathesis, this is the inferior pubic ligament, then deep uh, uh, the clatters that we are not concerned with, then the urethra, the pubic urethralis, the vagina, pubic urethra, pubic vaginalis, this is the rectum, and there is a segment. This is a very important segment. Now uh, this is a musculoskeletal extension of the urethra, then what we call the pubic rectalis muscle is over there seen. And the lower, the lower ones are the tendinous arc of tendinous arc of the levator And these are the, uh, these muscles are piriformis and the ischiococcygeus muscles. So we are concerned not below this muscle, but we are concerned with this part only. So this part, whenever it is torn, when the vagina is torn in this linear fashion, this comes to over this and only remains over there a membrane. And so this part is a formation, this is the perineal body which is to be formed by us, which is called as perineography. This is cl classically seen, or this is for pressure transverse muscle, the bulbous sponges are over there, external anal sphincter, anacoxygel raphe. So we are concerned only with this part. Now again, same thing. Uh, here uh, again, diagram uh, uh, diagrammatic representation, this is superficial transverse perineal muscle, external anal sphincter and the uh, levator anna. This, what is this anocoxygeal ligament? This is the last part where the coccyx is attached with, with the anal canal. Then the coccygeous muscles, these are, these, are, these are the two levator anar over here and external sphincters. So this is all about the anatomy. The overall incidence in the United States is, uh, is uh, UK is in only 2.9 percent. That is less, the range is 0 to 8, but in India it is more than 13 percent with an incidence of 6 in primary para and compared with 1.7 in multi para. So now there are two types of actual uh, tear. This is the tear which occurs at the time of the delivery itself, the time of perturation. Uh, uh, actually the perineum to be managed and perineum to be sutured or uh, the, the, the perineal plastic should, should be done ideally at the time of the perpurium. At the time of delivery, if you do the things, it rightly happens and it takes care of the, uh, the con incontinence will not be happen. So now this is the intact anal sphincter. The sphincters are still, uh, the, I don't feel that it is the intact anal sphincter, only mucosa is there, but the sphincter is cut. The sphincter is cut. Now, any obstetric anal sphincter injury includes both third and fourth degree perineal tears. Gross injury due to mismanaged second stage of the labor. The overall risk of obstetric anal sphincter injury is 1% of all vaginal deliveries. And there is sometimes an occult injury. And the etiology that we know, overstretching of the perineum, rapid stretching of the perineum and inelastic perineum. So during perineum what happens, the, whatever the total pressure comes over in the posterior region. So the muscles are torn over here. This. So now the injury starts from the anal mucosa itself. It goes on tearing. Sometimes the mucosal layer can be stretched off, but the muscle, they do get tear. Now the injury starts from the anal, uh, this is uh, vagina. So vaginal mucosa from there the injury starts and it goes on increasing, goes to the uh, muscles. Then below the muscle, then now the uh, anal mucosa is there. So once the anal mucosa is torn, there is a grade 4 injury. So when the anus is also torn like this, right from vaginal opening um, to the uh, anal opening, that is a grade 4 injury. And these injuries are common, we come across all this. Anal incontinence is defined as an involuntary loss of feces, flatus or urge incontinence that's adversely affecting a woman's quality of life. 
up to 40 percent of women with third or fourth degree perineal tears during childbirth suffer from anal incontinence this is not only the anal incontinence but uh, there the sexual problems are also uh, over emphasized they are uh, very much there the, the ladies do not talk openly of it that is because of the patulous vagina uh, their uh, sexual uh, life is also disturbed so if you grade the tear a rate of incontinence 3a 3b 3c and 4th in 3a 20 to 42 percent 3b 23 to 44 percent 3c is 9 to 19 to 51 percent and 4th is 24 to 64 percentage now we will be coming to it how you classify this the first degree injury to perineal skin only perineal skin only second degree injury to perineum involving perineal muscles if the perineal muscles are torn but not involving the anal sphincter third degree that is external anal sphincter and internal anal sphincter injury to perineum involving the anal sphincter complex that is external anal sphincter and internal anal sphincter 3a less than 50 percent of the external anal sphincter is torn 3b more than 50 percent of the external anal sphincter is torn and 3c is both internal anal and external anal sphincters are torn fourth degree injury to perineum involving the anal sphincter complex and the anal epithelium this type of injury will be noticed uh, notified in the females those who are coming from the rural area so this is all the pectoral presentation which we can see the fourth degree uh, that is true and pro everything is cut over here here the uh, anal membrane is uh, the anal mucosa is there but the muscles are cut now uh, this type of the uh, post partial tear causing incontinence you can see now you cannot identify here where the vagina and the, where the anal canal is both the things are mixed together there is only you cannot identify where the vagina is and whether this so this is the last one is a anus and there there is only a simple membrane in be, in between the two you can see over there this is a anus and this is the uh, vagina where there is only a, this membrane is seen there is great nearly grade three grade three c so this type of injuries we come across and this type of injury leads to anal incontinence also so in such, such a position where there is a uh, perineal tear is there there is always a political war in between the uh, surgeon and in obstetrician and who is to operate it and who is to conduct it uh, so rightly we should do it there should not be any option for that and but just just after the delivery if the patient is there for the repair of the external anal sphincter either an overlapping or end to end approximation method can be used and with equivalent outcome yes on the table it's very easy if you are called in in a uh, labor room what has happened then you have to do the systematic uh, repair and that repair itself starts from the vaginal mucosa from the vaginal membrane then you go uh, so uh, layer by layer if you go layer by layer you go first first suture the, uh, the rather it, that is just reverse when in the perpetuum is there you go from downward above last last layer to be sutured would be a vaginal wall so where the internal anal sphincter can be identified it is advisable to repair separately with interrupted sutures all the times the this is to be repaired not with continuous but the inter intermittent interrupted sutures a repair of third and fourth degree ts should be conducted in an operating theater under regional or general anesthesia so these are the emergency perineal tests which which we, we have done uh, this is how it was a grade 4 injury and after that repair it, it, it looks like that now obvious injury to the perineum with loss of perineal body causing fecal incontinence and vaginal fabness which needs a need of perineography a digital rectal examination is must to see the tone of the external anal sphincter manometry and ultrasound examination is preferred but not mandatory you have to present if you have to present over there then you, have, you should have that right, investigation with you ball preparation for 12 hours before surgery is a must again because you have to do the plastic surgery plastic repair we should not spoil your uh, complete repair so ball preparation is a must and two days nbm after that we keep the patient the results are good now uh, already started patient under regional or general anesthesia now is the lithotomy position uh, this much of the this layer is given the injection of the uh, saline and adrenaline injection is given and installation of saline in, at anovaginal junction and then you give the incision what you do is here the posterior wall of the vagina that is to be uplifted 
this dissection should be done not blindly you can do this uh, slowly separating the transverse perineal bus that comes th last one but we'll go accordingly now here we are uplifting the mucosa that is uh, posterior wall of the vagina completely now we go above and we try to separate the muscles the levator uh, the, the two levator ana muscles that that are seen over there these are to be practically got together and this has this is to be sutured so medendrafe in between the two uh, vagina and the rectum would be created and that will create a spliss now now uh, in this case uh, patient where there was a dilated uh, anal mucosa that uh, redundant anal, anal mucosa can be shortened by suturing it so that this will give a good continence so we are now shortening the anal canal anal canal to be the suture of the suture to the anal canal so anal canal is shortened to zero vicryl only used and once that anal canal is shortened now you go to the levator ana and do the pr examination and you feel that it is inadequate it should not be too tight but it should be then adequate anal canal so that the continence of the anal incontinence the continence factor is uh, rem, uh, well settled now these are the levator ana the suture they we plaquette it in the midline this is on the left side this is on the right side this is the levator ana is plaquetted this is once you should your dissection should be the to, to the up to the level that the posterior wall of the vagina is uplifted and you are targeting the uh, levator ana if you, the in front you get the two uh, bands of the levator ana muscle and these are to be plaquetted in midline here i used to have the uh, 20 vicryl but now i have started using 30 pds because it should lie for a long time so that once the, the because that is uh, the clue of the formation of the perineal body it will form the basics of the perineal body so that this will create a distance in between the two this is this is a very important step once you placket these muscles then you come from downward above so whatever the muscle these are coming superficially superficially up to the external anal sphincter that these muscles the now there is external anal sphincter fibers which were just reverted back they were absolutely taken back so these are brought together now these are the external anal sphincter muscles these are to be sutured now this is very uh, ideal and teaching video once you placate it because this uh, this stage of uh, this step of uh, um, bringing the two external sphincter muscles this is always a tough uh, tough thing because it is just underlined the, in the skin so you have to go laterally you have to search out those fibers of the torn external sphincter and those are to be brought again in the midline so once this uh, external anal sphincter is sutured you are practically important part of the surgery is over now you come down to the uh, superficial muscles so that the superficial muscles are uh, superficial transverse perineal muscles so these all fibers were fragmented at the time of the tearing and these are these are scattered outside laterally so these all those muscles they are to be separated from the subcutaneous part from below the subcutaneous tissue and now all those muscles to be united in the midline so now the external anal sphincter that is over that part is over now now you have to go down laterally again then perineal transverse perineal muscle these are the see that those are very small fragments these fragments are brought together once external sphincter is uh, union is over then only transverse perineal muscle comes in picture and you come from downward about till the subcutaneous part and the surgery is over some uh, in earlier stages i used to keep the drain to drain it but uh, 
Now I stopped it because once you do it very, uh, very meticulously, there is no problem of any oozing or any problem of. Again, we are to putting uh, intermittent sutures, so whatever the collection remains, it can th be uh, just soaked out. So there is no need of uh, keeping the drain now. In the initial part, I used to keep. Then the vaginal wall is sutured. We start from the vaginal wall and you come across in the perineum so that the perineal body form, uh, formation is there. Now, whatever the part below the vagina is up to the anal canal is a perineal body. That is the formed perineal body. And it, now itself on the table that you can see that before starting there was only a less than 0.2 centimeter layer was there in between the vagina and the anal canal. But now after doing this, you can have more than 1.5 inch that that much of the perineal body is reconstructed so uh, this will improve the continence as well as her uh, the flabbiness of the vagina is also taken care of so lastly you can palpate it the uh, the anal canal is shortened it is uh, quite a well uh, structure is seen over here the with proper post operative follow up and Perioperative instructions and care, the results were evaluated after one and a half months. Vicryl 2.0 has given way because sometimes the infection occurred. Uh, infection at wound site in earlier th three cases, but the wounds were normal with good strength by PDS 2.0 suture. Out of 31 cases, 26 cases improved for anal, in anal continence and two cases had developed dysperiunia because of the tightening of the uh, vagina due to shortening of the vagina and the too tight closure of levetana. Only one case had developed vaginal tightening and partial in partial continence. These are the post-operative pictures. You can definitely see over here how they before surgery they was this was the only lining over there. Now this much of the uh, after post-operative recovery you can, you can see on table this was of the uh, places created. Now here you see the place is only this much after post-operative thing. These are the pictures. So itself on table it can show you. And then the same thing, preoperative, there is, you, you cannot delineate the thing properly, but postoperatively you can say this much of the distance is created. Preoperative stresses, this was in, uh, in a case which of, uh, during the labor itself, after the labor this has occurred, uh, at the same time the postoperative picture was like this. Again you see, this is only the uh, perineal body you see how th uh, thinned it is, after that you can have a post-operative picture is seen over there. Now, uh, pre-operative picture was like this. Post-operative was this. I, in initial phase, I used to keep a drain. After one month, the normal perineum was seen. Uh, again, the same thing, post-operative picture like this. And after one month, absolutely normal perineum. After three months, patient was uh, allowed to have uh, a sexual intercourse also. That. So you see the preoperative pictures of how it was, how bad it was after at postoperative period on the table itself, and after one month this was a nice perineum. So how you see that normal anatomy showing the perineal body and rectovaginal septum. This is the rectovaginal septum actually. This is the uh, rectum and this is the vaginal part. Vaginal part. This is the uterus. So this is vagina. And normally this is the rectovaginal septum so thick. So this is the perineal body, which is a, a long one. This is in normal form. But when the perineal tear before surgery, you see that now this is the rectum completely. And you see that uh, there is no, this much of the portion is overseen over here only. So this is after perineal tear. This is the only portion and vaginal septum. And after uh, construction of the perineal body, you see that this much of the portion is constructed. So this much of the widened structure is called as perineal body. So this is near normal. This is, this length is equal to this length. So near normal formation of the perineal body is seen. So what is the post-operative measures? Daily wound care, antibiotics and anti-inflammatory with laxatives. Laxatives to be used for not less than 15 days. Avoid strenuous activities for a month. Another approach is also there. I routinely, I have never performed it. This is given in Corman, but this can be done in that way also, where lateral flaps are to be brought to form the uh, midline or to form the perineal body. Again, just like jet plastic. This is again the, the approach is described in Corman. Nicely, you, you can copy it from the Corman also. 
conclusion is the obstetric perineal injury is having disastrous trauma if neglected in the early postpartum period. Carefully assisted delivery with medio-lateral episiotomy can avoid perineal injury. Early repair of perineal tear is easy in identifying the structures and it does not lead to gross trauma to the perineal body. Meticulous case selection with evaluation of vaginal and anal symptoms and to decide the grade of perineal tear before surgery is mandatory in which grade you are doing it. Results of perineography improves the fecal incontinence. This is all about. Thank you very much. Any questions, please? Ah, uh, console. You, 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 you mean to say some advice? Constipate, constipate. Constipate. No, no, no constipation. No constipation. You are talking about constipation? Do you constipate the patient post-operative? I don't know. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I couldn't take your hands. I do not uh, add to anything because I I want that there should be laxity. I, sh I give the laxity to the patient for not less than 15 days. He sh she or she should not strain at the perineum. So there should be a good amount of laxity to be given to the patient. She should be uh, asked not to spread up their perineum. She sh uh, she sh uh, she is not allowed to spread like this. She should be given that uh, she should be sitting on the. Uh, Commode itself only, so that 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 perineal. Uh, so any of the any of the uh, exercises or any of the uh, menus, what she will be doing in the routines, should not uh, give the strength to the perineum. And uh, I, I I can tell you, this is very exhilarating. This is very important surgery as far as the perineal tear is concerned. When the patient satisfaction is too heavy, yes, sir. Compliments for a beautiful video. We must all appreciate. And I think we surgeons should learn doing this because nowadays what I am observing is this is again going to plastic surgeons. Plastic surgeons, so some gynecologists also do it. Learn doing it, yeah. Uh, one question, sir. Uh, suturing technique, you already said a PDS is being used. Yes. But uh, the type of suture, can we uh, use it mattress doesn't, it, it, or figure of eight? Is uh, it nine, nine, it, it doesn't matter, sir. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Difference. It doesn't matter. I tried both three times. What routinely we are doing sometimes taking this going yeah, to yeah. this back and then uniting together. But sometimes the uh, we should go in a way that the knot should go in between and it should go downwards. Okay. Now, uh, which are earlier cases when I used two zero PD, uh, two zero PDS, so that some some fibers because that is a stuff uh, stiff uh, suture material that penetrated the vagina. That also seen. One case was there with me. Like, so that like like proline, like, ah, proline. like proline. So you have to be very if it, it uh, so uh, you should not tor uh, torture the thing because that place is uh, very small. So, so best to start is with two zero PDS is better. Two we zero three zero PDS you can you also bury, use. Bury the knots. Bury, bury the knots. Thank that you. is all. Thank you. Uh, see, main principle when you are suturing such a chronic wounds. You should not excise fibrous tissue from okay. the muscles. Hmm. Fibrous tissue will help your sutures. If you excise this fibrous tissue, then you are, you know, mattress and jade or this to hold sutures that comes. That may constrict little blood supply in that. But if you don't cut fibrous tissue directly, you can suture or even overlapping suture can be done. But mind well, you should not excise fibrous tissue. And what he said, two days at least or three days we keep patients kneel by mouth or on liquids. After four days only we start something because still that tissue has been nearly taken up. Yeah, I keep fibrous tissue there also. Even suturing internal opening, what Fist is lift? Fistulectomy. In lift also, they keep fibrous tissue there. They don't excise fibrous tissue there like it. Okay. Because fibrous tissue takes up your suture very firmly. If you make only fistula without fibrous tissue and try to put, that will necrose. That's why your skin sutures going through the mucosa usually cut through. But if you take through the fibrous tissue and internal opening is closed, usually may not cut through. Thank you, sir. Now the second part of the examination to be conducted now. I will be sitting in a room only one by one. Once some, somebody, uh, the uh, hall should not be vacated, only come by one by one. One comes, 
over there in the room. We'll be sitting over there. Doctor uh, Gutter will guide you. Myself and Doctor. Meanwhile, shall we continue the talk, sir? Good morning all. This is basics of the fissure. This slide shows that we should not do uh, stretching or dilatation in such a way. Okay. Coming to a definition of the anal fissure, it's a painful linear spindle shaped longitudinal defect tear in the anodom extending between the dentate line and anal verge. So always keep in mind that uh, <coughs> the fissure extends between the dentate line and anal verge. This is called as typical anal fissure. Classification, two types of the anal fissures. Primary, the exact etiology is not known, idiopathic and secondary fissures. The secondary fissures are secondary to some disease pathology. Again, primary fissures divided into acute and chronic. Signs and symptoms, patient usually complains of pain, anorectal pain provoked by the defecation. The pain is so severe, burning, pricking in nature, so that there will be fear to go for the feces. He may constipate the, uh, he may postpone his uh, bowel movements and may undergo the chronic constipation. Anal bleeding, the bright red blood on the column of the stool and tissue paper. Constipation, patient avoids the food and constipate the, for the fear of the pain. Constipation apparently not the trigger but rather the result of anal fissure. And there may be anal pruritis due to the secretions from the exuding wounds. Hypertonic anal papilla and abscess leads to the pruritis. Location, the posterior commissure, commonest site for the fissures. 45 to 86.1 percent and anterior midline 39.3. The Golliger noticed ventral fissures common in women. Morning in the exam also Sarah has asked. Uh, this is due to the least support of the internal anal sphincter from the external anal sphincter. And lateral position 0.5 to 12.3. These are atypical fissures. The commonest stage group 30 to 50 years and gender equally affected incidence is increasing in children and younger age group the duration anal fissure patients are very tolerant suffer from the pain exceptionally long period so usually there will be long period of anamnesis epidemiology and etiopathogenesis about 10 percent of the population suffer from the anal pressure this is a western data probably in indian scenario the incidence may be more the anal fissures are the commonest cause of anal pain and bleeding PR in children. Multiple anal fissures common in children and young adults. 50% of the young population shows the sentinel skin type and 85% of the fissure patients in children suffer from the constipation. Coming to the various theories, uh, anal sphincter hypertonia theory, all of us knows internal anal sphincter is tonically contracted state and it is responsible for 50 to 60% of resting anal pressure. So, whether the sphincter leads to the uh, hypertonia of the sphincters leads to the fissure or fissure causes the hypertonia, there is a controversy. But whenever the uh, sphincter pressure was measured, it is definitely higher. And there are the various methods like uh, gas, gas method and inflating the fluid and uh, recently the uh, digital manometers are there. But always the pressure varies the ta from the person to person, sex, gender, time when you are measuring and even the person is aware that you are measuring the pressure, there may be um, in increased pressure noticed in the your uh, readings. And anal sphincter fibrosis, the researchers have studied the microscopically the uh, internal anal sphincter. The fibrosis, this is nothing but sclerosis as the age advances, all the everybody's sphincter, even mine, yours, it shows some type of some amount percentage of sclerosis so when they studied um, the certain amount of the sclerosis among the 20 years age group they graded as a grade one and percentage of the sclerosis uh, between 20 to 40 years they staged as a grade two and percentage of the sclerosis when uh, noticed in uh, between 40 and 80 years this is a grade three and 
above 8 years all of us knows there is a sphincter uh, weakness and percentage will be more so in anal sphincter uh, anal fissure patient there is a accelerated sphincter fibrosis is noticed coming to trauma theory gabriel in 1963 proposed the hard tools which is known as kaibala which causes a mechanical strain especially on the anodum and weakest point especially at the commissures while going for the potty the tears may occur and even the, not only hard stools, the pulpy and diarrheal stool induces the lesions in the anodum by causing the papillitis and cryptitis, leads to the ulcers and fissures, anal abuse and anal sexual practices. Especially anal abuse is common in western countries, children below 12 years and males it is common. Whenever the child presents to you with multiple fissures, always keep in mind anal abuse. And anal sexual practices, especially in homosexuals and HIV patients, the anal fissures are common. Infection, proctoteal glands are more in the posterior fissure. Yesterday, we studied, uh, we studied in the anatomy that glands are more uh, in number posteriorly. The hard stools causes the perforations in the crypts leads to the anal fissures. Coming to ischemia theory, this is proposed by Kloster Hafen in 1989. If you look into the blood supply of the anodum below the dentate line, as per the standard teaching, inferior rectal artery should supply the below dentate line. But where cluster have and performed the angiographic studies in 85 percent of the patient blood supply is absent in the posterior commissure and 15 percent of the patient whatever the blood supply it is from the um, middle hemorrhoidal artery and also small caliber arteries so that is the reason posteriorly will get the more um, percentage of the fissures and learned in 1999 he studied the arteriolar density. Again in the commissures, the arteriolar density is less, even in the mucosa, submucosa and in the internal anal sphincter. The Gibson and Wright performed the uh, laser Doppler velocity and when they studied, the perfusion is least posteriorly and anteriorly. That is the reason the fissures are common and typical com fissures are common posteriorly and anteriorly. The anatomical cause, this is proposed by Lockhart and Memory in 1914. This is a picture even in the morning sir has showed where the internal anal sphincter is leastly supported anteriorly and posteriorly. Because of least support and because of least blood supply fissures are common anteriorly and posteriorly. This is a cycle whenever you pass a hard stool there is a microtoma leads to the acute fissure. Most of the acute fissures are superficial. Followed by the pain because of the pain there is a hypertonia or spasm of the internal anal sphincter and which leads to the high resting pressure and reduced anal perfusion leading to a local ischemia and poor wound healing. If you if you don't improve the uh, 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 cause, then the cycle repeats and it transforms into chronic fissure. This is again the same cause. There will be a tear followed by the spasm leads to the constipation. Again, the tear occurs. And following the tear, there will be a defecation leading to sclerosis and fibrosis, whatever I told, leads to the fibrous contracture. Again, anal stenosis, constipation. This cycle will ke keep on continuing. So what is the definition criteria for chronic fissure? The duration criteria and morphological criteria. Any fissure lasting longer than 6 to 8 weeks is called as chronic fissure. Coming to the morphological criteria, the edges, depth, condition of the edges and secondary changes. The edges usually in chronic fissure, these are foam, brown, bulging, scarred or callused. The depth of the ulcer, usually chronic fissures, the internal anal sphincter will be exposed. The condition of the edges, I already spoke and secondary changes. What are these secondary changes? These are the hypertrophied anal papilla and um, sentinel skin tag the hypertrophied anal papilla will be at the cranial end sentinel skin tag will be at the caudal end the hypertrophied anal papilla this is also known as anal palip papillitis hypertropicans and uh, cat's tooth the prevalence is 5% to 45% the pathology is infection followed by the inflammation in the glands there will be anitis cryptitis and followed by papillitis the polyps may be sessile or pedunculated, polypoidal, millet to cherry size, the tip may be bifid. Clinical importance causes the foreign body sensation, urgent but futile need to defecate. The differential diagnosis, whenever you are seeing the hypertrophied anal papilla, keep this differential diagnosis in mind and always it should be subjected for histopathological examination. Anal thrombus, condylomas, deep reaching rectal polyps, amelonotic melanomas and anal carcinomas. Anal cryptitis. The incidence of the cryptitis is about 61 to 83 percent. Pathologically altered crypts located at the cranial end of the fissure. Distinct from the <coughs> orthological crypts, probe head cannot be seen as a shimmering through due to the edema. There may be lot of edema and uh, inflammation. You cannot pass a probe. And shining surface of the probe is not seen. Post discharges from the crypt during the probing. Pathologically altered crypts should be ablated during the anal fissure. Sentinel skin tag. 
the located at the distal end of the anal fissure secondary to chronic inflammation should be ablated this is a hypertrophied anal papilla this is a chronic fissure with round, rounded fibrotic margin this is a skin scantil and skin tail so one should keep in mind this is all due to the infection inflammation and lymphatic obstruction the abscess mm, fissure may be associated the fish land abscess these are also known as marginal fistulas non genuine anal fistulas incidence is about the 10% this is Coop Chandani et al. from US they studied. The pathology is chronic city of the fissure leads to the increased secretion. There is an undermining of the sentinel skin tag followed by the sinus formation. This is an incomplete fistula and which breaks through the perianal skin and sh uh, short superficial subcutaneous fistula forms. This is the fissure with uh, abscess. This is called as a marginal fistula. This is not a cryptoglandular fistula. This is again the fissure. Why I have shown many times the hygiene plays a role in uh, forming the fissures also. Many patients, when do you ask, so look, bolta hai ki clean hai. But when you examine, you see the unhygiene nature of the anal, uh, anal opening. And this is a ventral fissure. And the skin, skin tag indicates that there may be fissure uh, posteriorly also. These are the chronic inflammatory changes in the chronic fissure. Coming to secondary fissures. I am calling these as fissures only. They are not ulcers because textbook says to call them as fissures. So, common histidesis are ulcerative colitis, Crohn's and tuberculosis. So, 7 to 23 percent of the ulcerative colitis patient will have the secondary fissures. These are multiple, which is the above the dentate line. As I said, the typical fissure will be below the dentate line. And broad-based inflamed outside median fissure, that is lateral position. These are extremely painful. These are ulcerative colitis with chronic fissure. Coming to Crohn's disease, this is very common. Incidence is not even on par with the Western countries, partly regarded as complication, partly as an anal manifestation. 51% of the patient developed the fissures. Again, morning sir was asking, showing one slide and whether to operate or not. So most of the Crohn's patient will have the fissures and especially in chronic inflammatory condition, these fissures will undergo some tra changes like abscess formation and fish loss. So they should not be aggressively treated unless there is a sepsis or bleeding. Only during the remission phase, we should that to apply the seton. Anal lesions after the surgery for the Crohn's disease indicate that recurrence of the disease. You may perform some pouch surgery, some resection. Always look for the fissures in the anal canal. If there is a fissure, always it indicates recurrence. Incidence is about the 14 to 8%, 80%. The multiple anal fissures will be there, 66% posterior commissure, 50% anteriorly and 32% lateral location. These are frame pre ulcers, deep undermined wound edges, longitudinal axis may extend above the dentate line. The sentinel skin tags in Crohn's fissure are fleshy, larger, edematous and coarser than regular skin fissures. So if you see the fleshy and large and coarser, suspect the Crohn's disease. These are the tuberculous ulcers. Common in males, four types of the anorectal TB, miliary, lupoid, varicose and ulcerative. Ulcerative is very common. The patient gets the infection either hematogenously, lymphatic spread or sputum swelling or direct spread from the neighboring structure. Secondary to the pulmonary cox or abdominal TB. These are the soft superficial ulcers, neurotic, granulated, wound bed with purulent mucus coating. Edges are irregular and undermined. These are the undermined edges. Coming to the HIV and AIDS. Incidence is 21 to 40 percent. Perianal and intranal ulcers are common in homosexuals. Complaints of the strong pain and this is a tenismus. This is the only condition where you will see the severe fissure with tenismus. Rectal bleeding, purulent discharge. Lesions are multiple, deeper than and longer than the normal fissures. The entire circumference of the anal canal is involved and these are more proximally in the anal canal above the dentate line. Trauma due to the anal intercourse decreases sphincter tone. Here in children as well as the HIV patient, wherever the trauma is there, tone will be less. And uh, we all know that opportunistic infections are common. Herpes simplex 1, 2, human papilloma, whereas they causes the ulcerous anorectitis, CMV infection, histoplasma, complete loss of the anodum. Leishmanis is common in HIV patients. These are the broad-based fissures with abscess above the levator and entire levator muscles will be exposed. Syphilis, again, this is common in homosexuals, 1.5 to 2.5 percent uh, anorectal manifestation. Multiple ulcers, 60 percent lateral in position, symmetrical lesion. That is, opposite side also, you'll have the lesion. These are known as the kissing ulcers. Ulcers at the anal verge are coarse structure due to the touch. They are painless, but they are called as ulcus durham due to the um, uh, induration. And they are painless. Lesions at the anal verge are rounded to oval. Lesions in the anal canal above the verge are linear. Enlarged lymph nodes may be there. 
drugs causing the anal fissures the ergotamine all of us knows that it is used for the migraine then ergotamine used in the form of uh, suppositories anocutaneous ergotism causes a severe burning pain this is known as a st anthony's fire and rectal, it causes a rectal bleeding treatment is elimination uh, eliminate the noxa nicarondil again nicarondil is a very common drug used by our cardiology colleagues anorectal ulcers are unwanted side effects dose dependent they are not the duration it is a dose sometimes your cardiologist may increase the dose appear as a punctured out fissures at the anal verge intensor these are only the lesions showing the punctured out fissures causes of the ulcer there may be vascular steel phenomenon reducing the blood supply and physiological ischemia and electrolyte imbalance why electrolyte imbalance nicarondil blocks the potassium channels coming to the isotretinoin this is used by physicians and dermalized commonly used drug for treatment of the acne vulgaris anal lesion described as fissured and xerotic anal mucosa you should stop the drug eliminate the drug chemotherapy anal fissions are associated with the aggressive chemotherapy especially in patient with all aml burkitt lymphoma and amyloidosis anal fissures are atypical in location extremely painful fissure with secondary changes offer surgery during the remission phase only set on placement during the remission phase and during the aplastic phase sitch bath and anti inflammatory drugs and local anesthetic should be given pathological condition causing the fissures leukemias in first slide the, these are the drugs causing the uh, uh, fissures this is a leukemia is also prone for fissures and always the fissures in leukemia patient is a bad sign perianal and anorectal complications are common aml all burkitt lymphoma and multiple myeloma anal verge the how the lesion starts there is a large thrombus transform into black color and exacerbates extremely painful deep neurotic ulcer necrotic ulcer extend into rectal ampulla anorectal lesions in leukemias are signum mali omnis that means it is a bad prognostic indicator cow milk allergy this also causes the constipation followed by the fissures multiple and lateral position so shift the milk to soya milk bechet disease all of us knows this is a autoimmunological disorder apart from the oral ulcers it may cause the ulcers in the anal mucosa coming to grading and staging as with the all the malignant diseases we have the grading and staging for the benign diseases this is a novel classification i got from the books this is vnet classification stage 1 is the acute fissure these are usually superficial there won't be any secondary changes stage 2 these are the chronic fissures and they are shallow shallow means internal sphincter is not exposed again a b c d a is hypertrophied anal papilla that is at the cranial end and uh, anal uh, sentinel skin tag at the distal end associated with the cryptitis and d is the fistula formation again stage 3 the difference between the stage 2 and stage 3 in the stage 3 the internal anal sphincter is exposed you can ask why we want class this classification this is for study purpose we may ablate the hypertrophied anal papilla some may perform only sphincterotomy so for the results and for comparative and uh, studies we need this classification and differential diagnosis all the secondary all the fissures i have shown are the differential diagnosis and erosions and ragged's erosions are common the people who uses the tissue papers who maintain want to maintain the uh, hygiene there will be micro superficial abrasion and ragged's are due to the too much of stretching of the anal skin the erosions are superficial involves only the epidermis whereas the ragged's involve the dermis also so other painful condition including the abscess is also differential diagnosis for fissure so proctalgia pugox unlike in the anal fissure the pain is not related to the defecation and anogenital syndrome this is due to the prostatitis other urinary symptoms will be there coccyodynia the pain will be while sitting or uh, getting up from the sitting posture this is how you can differentiate this medical therapy i am omitting because one of my other colleague speaker will be talking this is diagram is to show that in sphincter nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen monoxide synthetase decrease that is the reason we use the glycerol trinitrate ointment points for practice stress importance of the following the doctor's advice not to stop the treatment on their own relapse and complication and review examination surgical part shanti madam is not coming only two slides i want to speak about what are the principles of surgery complete or adequate relaxation of the internal anal sphincter followed by relieving the spasm of internal anal sphincter and reduced mean arterial resting pressure mean uh, uh, mean uh, um, um, anal resting pressure increases the blood circulation thank you sir and correction of the ischemia promotes the ulcer healing this is for the benefit of again students uh, sphincterotomy is a gold standard and uh, level 1a this is the american society of colorectal surgeons guidelines so whenever we are doing the sphincterotomy we may have the doubt how much sphincter to be cut so the, here is the slide showing the how much sphincter is to be this is the conventional sphincterotomy tailored sphincterotomy safe sphincterotomy and calibrated sphincterotomy so conventional sphincterotomy means the cutting the sphincter up to the dentate line superior healing rate level of evidence is grade 1a 
coming to tailored sphincterotomy level of evidence is great to be sphincterotomy up to the apex of the fissure that is up to the just below the dentate line safe sphincterotomy less than 1 cm of the sphincter is cut less than 25% of the internal anal sphincter we all came to know that the length of the internal anal sphincter is 4 cm this is usually practiced in females especially multiparous previous childbirths where the tone is tone is less calibrated sphincterotomy the predetermined diameter of the anal canal is aimed at achieving the 30 mm dilatation you can stretch the anal canal up to 45 mm as per the textbook one word about the Gabriel's fissurectomy. What is this fissurectomy? The excision of the hypertrophied anal papilla, all the margins along with the sentinel skin tag. We are not cutting internal anal sphincter. This is only shaving. This is called as Gabriel's fissurectomy and it shows the superior healing rates. Almost all the chronic fissures, I am doing this procedure with the laser. This procedure is very easy. Shaving of the scarred fissure of the internal sphincter, excision of the hypertrophied anal papilla, sentinel skin tag. Superior healing rate, 97.51% success rate. This is just an algorithm. Whenever the patient present to you anal fissure, follow the diet, advise them on uh, high fiber diet, sitch both, so stool softeners, local anesthesia. If it is not healed, and all the local anesthetic agent should be advised for 6 to 8 weeks. Even after the 6 to 8 weeks, if it is not going to heal, it is called chronic anal fissure. So again, give the second option. Either you change the chemical sphincterotomy agent from diltiazem to nifedipine or nifedipine to some other drug. Then if the heals, the lifelong dietary modification. Di dietary modification is for lifelong in order to uh, prevent the recurrences. If the patient follows the dietary modification, the recurrence rate is less than 15%. If he is not follows within 4 to 6 weeks or for within 2 to 3 months, the recurrence rate is 85%. And if the patient doesn't want chemical sphincterotomy, give the option of the surgery. This is a, then assess the sphincter tone. If the tone is low, you may go for the fissurectomy with some flap procedure. If the tone is high, perform the sphincterotomy, either open sphincterotomy or closed sphincterotomy, laser or yesterday sir has shown that cataract knife, whatever you want. Okay. If the patient comes to you with a recurrence, then you need to do the ultrasound and manometry. The ultrasound to look for your external anal sphincter and manometry to look for the tone of the pressures in the uh, anal canal. If the pressure is less, again go for a fissurectomy and flap or go do a only medical or conservative management. If the ultrasound shows there is a break or tears in the external anal fissure, uh, external anal sphincter, then Better to do a fissurectomy again or conservative procedures. But if the external anal sp uh, sphincter is intact, if the pressure is normal or tone is increased, then you can offer the lateral internal sphincterotomy opposite side. Or you can offer bilateral sphincterotomy if the previous sphincterotomy is inadequate. And even you can offer the high sphincterotomy above the dentate line. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Now, next lecture is Dr. Rutwik Jaikar, sir, Medical Management of Fisher. Good morning to all the delegates and faculties. <coughs> and uh, I am thankful at the outset to the organizers for offering me this topic at 11th hour to speak on medical management of anal fissures. Being a surgeon, it's very difficult and uh, undigestible to speak on the medical line of treatment for anal fissures. But just we have uh, listened to Dr. Ganga Shankar. It does help. It's a very important part of the management of fissure. Because in acute fissures, if you go for good line of treatment on medical grounds, many of them, they, they do heal and they may not need surgery in the future. A contents, introduction, etiology, etc. Introduction, acute anal fissure is a longitudinal tear in the anoderm distal to the dentate line, exposing the internal anal sphincter with possible contraction or spasm. This causes pain, further tearing and decreased blood supply to the anoderm. This cycle of pain, spasm, ischemia contributes to the development of poor, poorly healing wound that becomes a chronic anal fissure. This is a picture of 
acute fissure and chronic fissure. Chronic is having sentinel tag and hypertrophic papillae and margins are they are uh, very edematous. If you see the etiology, already sir has told, posterior midline most common, strained evacuation of a hard stool, that's the cause. A repeated passage of water stool, again that's one of the cause for posterior midline fissure. Anterior midline fissure, it's seen in women following vaginal delivery. Lateral, yes, we have to be a little uh, uh, cautious regarding the cause, God's, as already sir has discussed. Underlying cause for the development of lateral fissure uh, could be Crohn's disease, could be tuberculosis, could be syphilis, chlamydia, Kaposi sarcoma, herpes simplex virus, infection, B cell lymphoma, squamous cell carcinoma. This has to be taken into consideration if the fissure is situated laterally. laterally. We will see now the clinical features. Tearing pain with defecation followed by sensation of intense and painful annual spasm lasting for several hours. Hematochesia, that's blood in the stools. Then characteristic features of acute and chronic fissures can be seen in anoderm by gently uh, separating the buttocks. It's too tender to do digital rectal examination and uh, anoscopy or protoscopy in this particular patients, especially in acute conditions, acute fissure. If suspecting atypical fissures, other causes of anal pain, then patient can be taken for examination under anesthesia. In medical management part, there are various aspects we have to take into consideration and advise to the patient. Diet modification, of course, it has to be advised. Adequate water intake, high fiber diet, preferably avoid non veg diet. They have to avoid it because non veg diet contains high protein contents. And as Sir said, diet modification has to be followed very strictly that advice has to be given to the patient and probably it is lifelong diet modification is lifelong otherwise recurrences are very 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 common then we can uh, prescribe stimulant purgatives as per the need it contains sodium picosulfate or bisacodyl then we can think of giving osmotic purgatives as per the need it contains lactulose mgso4 and magnesium hydroxide Stool softeners of uh, surfactants nature also can be given a thought uh, like liquid paraffin or mineral oil. Even bulk forming agents as per the patient's need, we can add bran, methyl cellulose or esargula. And again, we are, there are many preparations available in the, uh, uh, from pharmaceutical aspects. Uh, Sarabdophalac, crimaphine, crimaphine plus, it contains crimaphine with the sodium picosulfate. When you low look fiber, 15 grams at night time with water also can be advised if they want uh, bulk forming stools for easy evacuation of their stools. Of course, we have to think of giving antibiotics of uh, imidazole group, ornidazole, metronidazole, doxycycline. For three to four weeks, we can keep on giving the antibiotics and changing their uh, groups as per the need. And of course, there is a rule of oral analgesics. We can give paracetamol, diclofenac, ibuprofen or tamadol as per the need to the patient twice or thrice a day. It may be needed for two to three weeks till the patient gets adequate relief from pain. Patient should be advised to apply various ointment jellies uh, by digital manoeuvre. And if patients, if they are hesitant to apply jellies, etc., or it's going, it's uh, uh, difficult for them to apply digitally by apply, by using their fingers. Then you may advise them send mask dilator number five or six. They can apply jelly at the tip of the mask dilator, and they can push in the dilator inside the anus. Uh, it will create a little dilatation. It will create a uniform application of ointment or medication to the uh, anal canal. Seeds bath, potassium permanent bath, it's also advisable to the patient. Uh, they, they have to sit for 15-20 minutes. It may augment healing by causing soothing effect, increasing blood supply, and it has got mild antiseptic action also. This also can be advised for 2-3 to three weeks. Home remedy, we can say. Topical therapy is also available. Digital application is preferred over the applicators. Uh, there are many medications which are available nowadays. 
जायलोकेन जेली टू पर्सेंट और फाइव पर्सेंट जेली फॉर लोकल एप्लीकेशन इट कॉजेज पेन रिलीफ एंड स्पाजम रिलीफ इवन देर आर प्रिपरेशन कंटेनिंग नाइट्रेट्स पॉइंट टू पर्सेंट टू पॉइंट फोर पर्सेंट जेल हेड एक इज मोस्ट कॉमन इन द साइड इफेक्ट एज वन ऑब्जर्व इन द पेशेंट्स देन वी डू हैव कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर्स निफिडिपिन पॉइंट टू परसेंट और टू परसेंट डिल्टियाजम इट कैन कॉज एनल डायलिटेशन एंड रिलीफ फॉर्म स्पैजम साइड इफेक्ट्स आर लेजर कंपेयर टू नाइट्रेट्स दीज आर द वेरियस रेमिडीज ऑइंटमेंट्स क्रीम्स विच आर अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट एंड वी कैन थिंक ऑफ गोइंग फॉर टेम्पररी केम केमो डी नर्वेशन लाइक बोटॉक्स इंजेक्शन इट कैन कॉज रिलैक्सेशन ऑफ द इंटरल इंटरनल एनल स्पिंग टर्म एंड इंक्रीज ब्लड सप्लाई टू अफेक्टेड एनोडम ट्वेंटी यूनिट्स ऑफ बोटॉक्स कैन बी इंजेक्टेड इन टू द इंटरनल एनल स्पिंग टर ऑन ईच साइड ऑफ द फ्यूचर देन माई कोलिक डॉक्टर जम्मा सर माई टीचर ही विल बी टॉकिंग मोर डिटेल रिगार्डिंग uh indications and uh, spectrotomies etc thank you thank you much thank you so much any questions on the medical and treatment thanks thank you sir now next talk by dr sachin jamma sir laser lateral spectrotom Good morning, everyone. At the outset, let me thank ISCP and Solapur Surgical Society for giving me an opportunity to share my little experience with you. And I was asked to. No, Vegla hai. Samindra, ab karte. I was asked to talk on laser surgery for anal fissures. So, open surgery I have not covered into this. I'm sorry. प्रेजेंटर व्यू मध्य आला हाँ friends i have no disclosures so of course i am not going to do, go into the theory of fisher in ano but just the definition it's a painful linear tear in the posterior anoderm extending cephalic to the dentate line and cephalic to the dentate line as we know 90% of the fissures are posterior in females we will get around 25% of the fissures which are anterior one actually the surgery which i'll be talking about is laser surgery which is laser lateral internal sphincterotomy but the open or close internal lateral internal sphincterotomy was described by eisen hammer in 1951 and since then it's a wonderful surgery being done for this painful anal condition it gives prompt relief by reducing pathologically elevated anal pressure and gives 95% cure in nearly 3 weeks so as we all know the indications are a chronic fissure the fissure which does not respond to your medical line of treatment for 6 weeks can be considered for surgery we we'll have to keep in mind few contraindications and important for contraindication for this lateral internal sphincterotomy is when the tone of the patient sorry tone of the anal canal is poor so one has to do a correct examination or examine the anus and find out how is the tone in that case if there is spasm then only this surgery is indicated 
and in her, in her typical fishes we will have to find out the cause whether there is any associated inflammatory bowel disease or granulomatous disease and then only consider this surgery anesthesia is usually by the choice of the patient as well as the operating surgeon it can be general anesthesia it can be spinal saddle anesthesia or even it can be done under septa so septa is preferred by many surgeons over here i know and that's why i mentioned it over here uh, pre operative antibiotics are hardly needed and there is no bowel preparation needed for this surgery mind well though it appears to be a small surgery there can be complications like bleeding at the site of puncture there can occur a hematoma there can occur infection sometimes if you happen to perforate the anal canal mucosa there is a chance of developing fistula sometimes when you use laser injudiciously it can cause burns locally recurrence is a known complication even incontinence is known but majority of these patients the incontinence is transient just up to 50% of patients can have this for gas gas or liquid stools or sometimes there can be soiling but it recovers fast and in some patients there can be incontinence uh, which may be little longer lasting so like in laparoscopy we mimic all the steps of open surgery maybe we can say same thing is true over here in laser surgery also so there are two different types of lateral internal sphincterotomies as we know in open uh, it can be open or it can be closed open is the puncture is bigger you bring the sphincter fibers outside and cut it with a knife or a cautery that is what is done in open and in close your knife enters into the either intersphincter groove or goes submucosally and then cuts the fibers of the internal sphincter of course the first step will be examination of the fissure finding out whether there is internal papilla whether there is sentinel pile and all those things and then you go ahead with injection of now what i am describing is a technique which is called as medial to lateral but some surgeons are fond of doing it lateral to medial now what does this mean so if you go into intersphincter plane and cut the internal sphincter from lateral to medial that is called as a lateral to medial technique if you go into submucosal plane and cut the internal sphincter laterally while going laterally that is a medial to lateral technique which i prefer personally so what we do is inject some saline and create tumescence so there are few video clips which i would like to play yeah i'm injecting saline you can inject saline adrenaline and that creates tumescence the whatever is seen at the center is the gauze next is you have to laser put the laser fiber bare fiber we use uh, the preferred laser machine which is used is 1470 nanomoles diode laser and the energy which is used is 10 watts per millimeter per second so you can see the laser gun going through the mucocutaneous junction inside puncture then we wiggle it out up to the level where we want to cut the sphincter now there can be a variation one may cut it the full length of internal sphincter from the dentate line up to the external anal canal or one may cut it just 1 cm or common choice is fisher length cutting of the sphincter which even i prefer so when we wriggle out it upwards the tip is kept outside we will have to be careful that the tip nowhere touches the mucosa the angle of the uh, probe or the laser gun has to point out and touch the internal sphincter and then gradually deliver it out putting the laser energy at a rate of 1 mm per second and then it lasers the internal uh, sphincter it cuts the internal sphincter so i'll repeat the video now yeah sorry this is one and then after cutting the video uh, sorry cutting the fibers one has to put some pressure with the fingers so that whatever fibers are not broken they'll be broken and at the same time 
if there occurs some bleeding because of that that will be taken care of so hematoma will not form over there so you keep it for around one minute and then remove the finger next is we take care of the floor of the fascia so that is laced again you see to that you do not produce much sharing maybe we can curate it out earlier and then lace it and then again curate it out so there are various ways it is done so the floor is laced out so it reduces the pain it helps healing and then whatever sentinel pile or antenna papilla are there they are taken care of again same laser energy is used like a cautery machine you can use it but preferred is laser because the temperature locally is less you remove all the small papillae whatever it is there because many times patients are more concerned about this they are not worried about the fissure because they are not aware that there is a fissure inside they are worried about this sentinel tags so it is better to remove that i call it cosmetic surgery but the patient is happy after that so you remove everything but use minimal laser energy that is important and next is you put a ice finger inside the anal canal so reduce the temperature and of course along with that you need to give some pain relief to the patient maybe you can use diclofenac suppository earlier to putting the uh, ice finger or maybe you can give injectables maybe the patient can go home in the evening so this really gives very good results satisfying results and even i am myself i am happy with this type of surgery it is a short procedure for the patient for you for the anesthesiologist everybody is happy and gives good money that is also important so thank you thank you uh, thank you friends for your patient listening yeah yeah after internal Hello. adequate Hello. internal sphincterotomy is there any need to deal with a fissure because as you shown there is you lace the fissure because and this is below the dented line that may cause a pain so is there a really need to yeah, do yeah. A, uh, anything for that chronic fissure yeah definitely because there is some granulation tissue covering the muscle fibers over there which we curate it out there are some painful nerve endings over there which are taken care of and it definitely gives good relief of pain additional additional of course it relieves spasm lateral internal sphincterotomy relieves spasm no doubt it relieves pain but this definitely adds and even the healing is better that is what is observed and earlier healing is earlier maybe that is the reason why this is advised hello shall i yes sir, sir please uh, sir this is whatever you call this is a permanent defect i i have not you know read in literature internal sphincterotomy wound has healed by fibrosis again this is a permanent defect and study wise if you say incontinence about 12% may be 0 to 1 degree but 12% cases they have second thing at least 4 to 5% cases they have local problems like infection abscess fistula formation whether you use laser or any any energy source any yeah, method yeah, yeah. and second thing laser has got additional effect on the patient is it is a painful i think all laser people they promise to patient laser means no pain at all but laser gives at least 3 days pain that's why you use this ice packs first day in your ot you can use this ice fingers what is next you have to ask patient to purchase ice candy to keep there so otherwise pain will not be reduced i am not against laser of course sir. but we should tell facts to the patient this you uh, have to do in future yeah otherwise be, laser we should not promise them that it is a painless procedure even you do simple dilatation no, no. no patient will ask you tomorrow next day give us some analgesics i'll tell you if you have good radial dilatation i am not saying stretching i am checking radial dilatation that will give so effectively and patient will have no pain maximum what they can complain you know they complain you know, small cracks in the skin where they require some ointment there otherwise nothing is required in that yeah. plus 
लोकल नो कॉम्प्लिकेशन विल इव देयर नाइन्टी सिक्स परसेंट केसेस आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ्स देर इज नो इनकॉन्टीन्यूस जीरो टू जीरो इनकॉन्टीन्यूस दीज आर नॉट माय केसेस सो दीज थिंग वी वुड लाइक टू रिप्रोड्यूस इट अगेन आई एम आई एम नॉट अगेंस्ट लैटरल इंटरनल स्पिंग टॉट ऑफ मी बट वॉट एवर इट इज क्रिएटिंग सी वी आर फॉर पेशेंट्स you will also we agree with of me course, of course, it okay. is not that we are doing operation because i am smart in this operation i will do that only then that operation you have to keep for yourself only patient will not come if you give patients your result something like painless they can get no next day home and their duties from the retro are not you know absent from that if for example milligan morgan those who prescribe let me tell you them with laser also if you have this and patient remains 3 weeks at home what is use you are losing 3 weeks of manual power of the nation forget about you 1 uh, 1.4 crore people will require operation for him rights i am not saying total number they will require operation now count how many national hours have gone think on that term i am not modi still i think on that term you do everybody should become modi on the country you think on that term how many hours national hours are lost all these factors if you take we should deliver to the patients and again sir it is not only for patient you know our uh, you know when you used to go your mother or somebody used to take to you for giving some injection or other thing what should nahi nahi hey doctor hai na हाँ फार हल्का है फार कमी दुखत दैट इज द क्राइटेरिया फॉर युअर पेशंट्स युअन लेजर इज नॉट विदाउट पेन आई हैव यूज लेजर आई हैव थ्री लेजर्स आई एम नॉट यूजिंग इट लेजर हैज वॉट स्कॉल्डिंग पेन वेन यू से यू यूज लेस लेजर एंड देर इज नो पेन आई एम सॉरी आई कैन नॉट एक्सेप्ट इट यू आर बर्निंग दैट टिश्यू बर्निंग इज अ पेनफुल वेदर इट इज एनल कैनॉल आउटसाइड ऑन द आउटसाइड स्किन इट इज मोर पेनफुल सो लेजर यू डोंट से एज अ लेस I not say you less no, pain. No, no. I I never Partly said I sir it is painless. I never pain. said in my talk it is painless. <laughs> no, no, I am not saying. I am giving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, because I am I am also no, not a proponent of laser surgery. Say, I am not talking to you. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> Got it. I am not talking to you. I am talking to those laser lovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 see, these sir, people. Sir, sir, for we we all all even senior surgeons will agree. that we surgeons are forced to buy laser machines by patients uh, okay let us admit that let us admit that yeah, fine. fine we may use it may not use it uh, that okay, is different okay. but uh, unfortunately you yeah. understand yeah, yeah what patient means sir what patient it, means laser means the, the, uh, whether he comes in operation theater laser laga raha hai kya mere ko dikhao yes sir yes sir patients do ask me in operation theater believe me are baba bolo they do no. ask me in operation theater show me the laser machine yeah show they do your, ask me show your pottery machine they will say yes no, it is that laser. is not fair sir on our part not fair i'll tell you <laughs> what patient means laser is a painless thing and and, and uh, there should be no wound yes no agree, wound agree. mind well agree. and third they should go home without pain not lot of pain with them you are giving eye candies to them while going home Uh, no no sir i i don't do that sir i don't do that day one i scan is used day yeah. two i stepped on oral anesthesia and that is enough that is what is my short experience little what, experience what i can I say that <laughs> compared to you scalding i'm not i scan is not my terminology my yeah. dear friend yeah. i'll tell you yeah. one mm-hmm. of the ent surgeon he undergone milligan morgan mm mm-hmm. and secondly he was having so bad pain he asked his surgeon it is so painful what shall i do You said take this tablet. No, no, with that tablet also I have pain. Said then what? See what we do. If after tonsillectomy patient says pain is there, we give ice cream. Ice cream, you. yeah. <laughs> so he asked that time, shall I use ice candy? Not my version. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I, I think it is not the procedure that is to be blamed. It is the technique. Exactly. How you perform the procedure. The technique has to be very good. Absolutely, I agree with you. I agree with you. One thing yeah. I want to just to make it point. while doing the intra spin tomography as you are just opening a small uh, i think puncture you are doing if there is a hematoma formation post operatively after lac transmitted how you deal with that uh, it depends on the size of the hematoma if it is small one you need not do anything but if it is big one you can drain it 
simple with a small so neck is it not a good idea to keep it bit uh, larger incision to drain the if there is any hematoma or collection Most but every it. time hematoma doesn't occur it occurs once in a while with laser what i have observed uh, of course we all do with it with uh, knife also with knife the chances of hematoma are more than compared to laser this is what is my experience okay. so very few cases they'll have hematomas and once in a while it happens so for every case on the contrary like again what claims we make for uh, using lasers is a small puncture so that claim like open even laser sphincterotomy is done open way also some of the surgeons prefer that but in that case the opening the puncture is quite big because you are delivering out the sphincter and then cutting it with laser you can cut it with knife you can cut it with cautery you yeah, can cut it you, with if laser if you cut with the cautery there is bleeding of laser. exactly so that's why that's why so keeping a big opening again the patient will ask you sir tumhi laser ni kela nahi ka that is a standard complaint <laughs> thank you thank you thank you very much chute sir it is the online pro platforms which are marketing that it is painless not the surgeons actually sir no, said no, rightly no, see, we I are not telling I, it is I painless say, i am not blaming anybody no no I just not, i am not blaming for patient. the benefit of the juniors i am yeah, telling i am not blaming they also patient. should not tell that it is patient, painless what they mean laser is they google everything and come to you sir painless and what sir no, said is correct no, they want no, to see no, the fiber no, machine everything or many nobody says yaar <laughs> nobody has asked me three lasers i have okay i if you they want i'll keep in opd a laser dekho isme se kaun sa chahiye bolo uska ye keemat hai are kya baat kar rahe hai this way business we can do i have co2 laser so big machine isse karna hai to 2 lakh rupya isse chhota karna hai 1.5 lakh rupya aisa nahi chalta i'll tell you it is depending your very good relation with your patient and patient's belief in you See, if you don't have belief in your patient, patient will not have belief in you. You, you know, uh, deliver them goods. I was talking to Doctor uh, Doctor Vanke Day. If you do painless things, patient will always say, "Yeah, yeah, me, कुछ भी करा तो pain नहीं होता." Why? Why our uh, mother used to say, "Yeah, doctor sir, हाथ हल्का है, हाँ, injection है, चकरे की हुआ." It is because of that. Start it. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now next lecture uh, dr vijay shiv puja sir on management of anorectal injuries good morning at the outset i thank uh, iscp uh, organizing committee uh, giving me an opportunity to talk on this topic just i would like to ask from the audience how many of you have uh, dealt with the anorectal injuries or at least seen the anorectal injuries to me yeah it's not that uh, common injuries uh, and uh, that that's why it is important because almost uh, 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 there is a possibility that we can miss this type of injury and if you miss such of injuries there is lot of morbidity so this actually anorectum is very well protected region in between the pelvic uh, uh, pelvic cavity and by sacrum and in between two thighs that's why this less likely that it will be injured but always you should keep in the mind that uh, in the trauma blunt abdominal trauma blunt pelvic trauma penetrating trauma in the lower abdomen or buttock there is a chance that anorectum may get injured so the trauma could be a penetrating trauma or blunt trauma or blast can cause anorectal injuries so usually that uh, if it is a traumatic anorectal injury that can cause a high morbidity because usually it is diagnosed get ladies if you don't go by a systemic manner of like uh, to following the atls protocol dealing with the life threatening injuries first and detailed examination of the uh, whole body in the secondary survey so you can avoid delay diagnosis uh, there will be a associated pelvic injury so there will be a massive hemorrhage so in that case you should uh, you should also uh, uh, see that controlling the massive hemorrhage is very important that will avoid the high morbidity and as being a rectum and a urinary genito urinary tract nearby so there is a chances of pelvic infection and also associated uh, uh, sphincter injury 
so you should have a high index of suspicion as i told you uh, the penetrating injuries in the lower abdomen in the gluteal region perineum in upper thigh patients with the pelvic fractures patients with the genito urinary trauma these patients are uh, uh, likely to have uh, anorectal injury so these patients you should do a detail uh, per rectal examination uh, this per rectal examination is very what you are going to see in per rectal examination is uh, you you get a t blood at the tip of a finger you can feel the the sphincter tone sphincter has been uh, uh, damaged uh, you can feel the bony fragment if there is associated pelvic fracture you can feel uh, pelvic fragment if you there is associated genitourinary injuries you can feel the high riding prostate prostate is not in a normal position so this is where you can uh, uh, diagnose that patient may be having uh, uh, anorectal injuries so if the patient is uh, conscious and not, uh, is not cooperative then you can do a evaluation under anesthesia you can use some contrast imaging studies uh, nowadays multi detector ct scans are very uh, useful though so you can use a contrast studies to diagnose uh, colorectal injuries and uh, also you can use uh, scopes proctoscopes or proctos uh, flexible uh, sigmoidoscope you should be very cautious using the proctoscope and sigmo in, uh, in presence of injury because that can cause a more damage while doing the examination so grading of the uh, grading depends on the severity according to the american association uh, for a surgery of trauma these are divided into different grades grade 1 uh, is just a contusion and hematoma grade 2 is a, a partial thickness uh, laceration grade 3 injury if there is a involvement of more than 50% of the circumference of the rectum or anal canal it is a grade 3 uh, it less than 50% if it is more than 50% it is a grade 4 injury if there is a full thickness laceration with extending into the perineum that is a grade 5 injury and if there is a devascular segment it is a grade 6 injuries so management depends on the grades that's why grading is important the grade 1 2 where there is a just hematoma or a laceration you can manage it conservatively but for a grade 3 to grade 6 injuries patient needs some operative intervention and the operative intervention depends on the hemodynamic stability of the patients the patients who are unstable, pa unstable patient hemodynamically, those who are in hypotension, hypothermia, acidosis, these are the patients so you need to do just a damage control. What mean by damage control is just achieving the hemostasis, hemostasis by packing and preventing the in infection by diversion. And the patient, if patient is hemodynamically stable, you can go for a definitive management. So also the rectal injuries are uh, management of rectal injuries depends on whether it is a intraperitoneal or extraperitoneal rectal injuries. Intra management of intraperitoneal rectal injuries is the same as a colonic injuries. If there is associated injuries, the patient having high comorbidities, patient came late, patients uh, with peritonitis, these patients will need some sort of diversion and the diversion depends on the if how much uh, there is a loss of the tissue if there is extensive loss then you to you should do a permanent uh, hartman procedure and if there is a uh, the extensive loss is not there then you can just divert it and drain it and debride it and uh, if there is a patient is hemodynamically stable you can uh, think on patient came late there are no signs of peritonitis you can think of doing a primary repair if the rectal injury is extra peritoneal it all depends on the size and extent of the injury if injury is a small you can think of doing a transanal repair if it is a large wound you can do a uh, debride divert and uh, do the rectal wash distal rectal washouts and uh, if there is extensive loss of the tissue uh, you should do a hartman procedures so definitive management is uh, di that is a diverting colostomy which colostomy should be done if there is extensive tissue as loss as i discussed we should do a, a end colostomy if it is a temporary uh, thing that you need to just debride drain and uh, divert in that case just think of uh, doing loop colostomy uh, is the di distal uh, rectal washout necessary 
it is necessary it depends on the how much is the uh, colon is loaded if it is a loaded colon or if it is a uh, full colon then it is better to because it shows that there are chances of sepsis is less if you do a good rectal washouts uh, is the drainage of presacral space is necessary it also depends on the amount of uh, uh, mechanism of injury whether it is a blood injury or amount of uh, contamination and uh, uh, timing of the repair if it is a delayed repair it is better to do a presacral drainage it will definitely reduce going to reduce uh, chances of sepsis uh, we are going to see what are the actually if the rectal injury is associated with the pelvic fracture then the uh, as you know that the pelvic fracture cause can cause a extensive hemorrhage and patient can be in a shock so it is priority is a managing the shock patient by doing at least pelvic stabilization and uh, then once you stabilize the pelvis and the control the pelvic hemorrhage either by a packing or by angioembolization they can then uh, just you divert and once the patient is stable then you can do a definitive uh, uh, management for the rectal injuries if there is associated sphincter injury the uh, you should think of primary repair only when the it is a low velocity and it is a there is no much of the bleeding or no much of contamination then only you should think of a primary repair otherwise if patient is coming delayed or there is extensive hemorrhage or uh, contamination it is better to delay the repair there there can be a injury because of uh, uh, some sexual assault or uh, autoerotism Uh, how to diagnose is, is patient present with a fever tenesmus bleeding and leukocytosis and on examination you notice that the patient's anal sphincter is lax and this is uh, usually these are the injuries who are uh, extra peritoneal injuries if they are uh, small they can be managed primarily and uh, if they are uh, extensive large injuries then the standard is uh, debride drain and divert rectal and anal rectal injuries can be because of uh, aitrogenic uh, causes while doing the colonoscopy while doing the genema while doing putting the thermometer or suppose it while doing some procedures like prostatectomy even the uh, colorectal procedures like fistulectomy during miph as we, uh, during laser ablation of various things because inadvertently if there is a excess of energy then you can damage a uh, colorectal uh, part so Uh, you can have a sphincter injury if there is a anal uh, uh, sphincter injury during the uh, procedures like uh, fistulectomy uh, sorry uh, sphincterotomies fistulectomies so this can be because of obstetric uh, causes the basically the what it, uh, it is big, uh, causes is a sphincter injury or a pudendal nerve injuries what are the different causes of obstetric injury to the sphincter Uh, usually the primary patient so uh, during her first vaginal delivery where the perineum is very tight and uh, inertly we have to go a uh, median episiotomy that can cause uh, sphincter injuries then if you use a instrument like forceps delivery that can cause a uh, sphincter injuries if there is a prolonged second stage that can cause a pudendal nerve injuries and the uh, persistent occipital posterior position if baby size is large that can cause a uh, anorectal injuries or a uh, nerve injuries so how to prevent these injuries is uh, early rec recognition by uh, endoanal ultrasounds and uh, examination under anesthesia and if uh, there is uh, no contamination you can repair under anesthesia uh, what it requires is a meticulous ap approximation of the sphincters use pds suture rather than a uh, uh, vicryl or a catgut and you should have uh, some experience or you should call some experienced person who can uh, have a uh, experience of uh, uh, sphincter repair give adequate antibiotic cover and prevent the constipation and have a good follow up of these patients so what are the investigation that will help you to diagnose uh, sphincter injuries is an endo ultrasound manometry and uh, pudendal nerve uh, studies so uh, what is uh, done is a planned uh, sphincteroplasty is a overlapping sphincteroplasty that is usually done in obstetric uh, sphincter injuries these are the images uh, uh, x-rays of uh, patients who are uh, having uh, rectal uh, foreign bodies uh, maybe because of different uh, for the sexual pleasure or some accidentally uh, maybe their uh, foreign bodies uh, there are different foreign bodies seen and uh, there is a approach how to approach such foreign bodies is uh, 
if you have to see the detail abdominal examination if there is a signs of peritonitis then you should start uh, iv antibiotics uh, fluids and also think of uh, uh, doing a laparotomy in these patients this patient need to undergo x rays to find out the exact location and what is the foreign body and this patient usually need to examine under uh, sedation uh, use abundant local gili uh, adequately dilate uh, anal dilatation and uh, do gentle manipulation if it is a low and if it is a uh, very high then you wait for the next area edema to subside and uh, next day you try under anesthesia to take out the uh, foreign body and after taking out the foreign body you must do a sigmoidoscopy if there is a if to find out any mucosal injury or some uh, bleeding uh, post procedure so what you need to avoid uh, in these patients who are uh, having a foreign bodies this uh, uh, avoid embracing the patient asking and poking the history pushing it further into the colon blind use of forceps avoid removal of the sharp foreign bodies under sedation alone and uh, if patient is having fever and pain admit the patients these are the different techniques used uh, for the taking out the foreign body if it is a soft uh, surface uh, uh, foreign body then you can use just a foley's catheter proximal to the foreign body inflate and uh, pull the uh, foreign body outside if it is a jar like structure you can put a plaster of paris with some instrument like tongue depressor in it allow it to uh, become a hard and pull out this jar you can use a forcef if there is a instrument like a, a vibrator that it depends on the what type of foreign body there so in conclusion you should have a high index of suspicion uh, uh, for the diagnosing the anorectal injuries it depends on the mechanism of injury and remember three d's that is uh, drainage uh, debridement and diversion this is i think uh, this is a safest way of managing the anorectal injury if you don't have a expertise to handle the sphincter injuries and uh, always see that while doing the procedures like colonoscopy or colorectal you try to avoid the sphincter injuries early diagnosis and sphincteroplasty for the obstetric injuries and appropriate technique and observation for a uh, rectal foreign bodies thank you thank you very much is there any question for me i am ready to take that question yes sachin yeah if it is extensive tissue loss and uh, damage is a very extensive and it is difficult to repair like uh, uh, grade 6 grade 5 injuries where the most part of the rectum has gone in that case it is better to do a hartman procedure that is end colostomy and if it is a temporary colostomy that uh, you are going to uh, you are sure that you are later you are going to uh, uh, repair the sphincter or repair the rectal rectal mucosa in that case it is preferred to do a loop colostomy uh, because, because it is easy to uh, 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 re anastomose close it close it but in loop what happens is the stool yes yeah, stool stool spillage is there spillage. but it is a being a temporary uh, that can be avoided Accept acceptable for the injury acceptable yes sir see uh, nowadays i am practicing in thane mumbai but uh, when i was doing internship in miraj area in two months surgical practice i seen three bullhorn 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 yes how I, many I, you yes. see it? yes and how do you do deal with that yeah i think uh, i forgot to tell it's uh, in rural areas uh, bullhorn injuries are common and uh, usually the उनको वही जगह मिलता है मारने के लिए यूजली एंड दीज आर द पेशेंट्स यू द अप्रोच वुड बी द सेम एज अ पेनिटेटिंग इंजुरीज बिकॉज यूजली दीज आर द कंटामिनेटेड इंजुरीज यू हैव टू बी वेरी विजिलेंट अबाउट इंट्रोपडोमिनल एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द इंजुरी बिकॉज एसोसिएटेड बॉविल इंजुरी एसोसिएटेड ब्लैडर इंजुरी आर कॉमन so in that case it is better to uh, do a diversion if there is a hemorrhage do a packing if there is a contamination debride and drain and do a delayed repair i think and if there are associated injury you have to take care of associated injuries as well so if there are no question i end my talk thank you very much
on behalf of solapur surgical society being the president dr shupuje he has uh, given a very good cooperation and response for the cme and very helpful for conduct the function very smoothly we will get apologize for that thank you thank you sir now makam sir will cover the topics of tamis and tems and recent advances in c rectum very good morning to all uh, i think uh, we are uh, running little bit uh, late on the schedule and these are the quite extensive topics so i try to cover in brief as much as possible and uh, first of all i am very glad to be on this dais uh, as a, a, a presenting this uh, two topics and i'm very thankful to uh, icps team uh, at solapur surgical society and dr prakash ghatole sir uh, without whom uh, this would not have been possible so today's my topic for discussion uh, for presentation is uh, tamis and tem so uh, this uh, means trans anal Uh, microscopic or uh, minimal invasive surgery and uh, transanal endoscopic micro surgery so uh, i am fortunate that uh, uh, at aig i had this topic as my uh, research topic under dr gv rao sir's guidance and we were able to publish as uh, this topic in laparoscopic colorectal surgery book a step by step guide with online video atlas which was published by uh, taylor and francis publications which had published love and belly and this was published in on 27th of november uh, 2020 so uh, like uh, from yesterday morning till now uh, what we were be dealing with the all kinds of our known uh, open techniques laser techniques uh, re in relation to the uh, coloproctology now coming to Uh, tems or tamis is kind of entering into a different parallel universe so uh, we'll sh uh, start the our journey with this uh, there is a small this instrumental difference the actually tem and tamis they work on the same principle uh, they work uh, uh, it is the same local excision but different acronyms the difference uh, mainly lies between the use of instrumentation or the types variants of instrumentation so which ha this procedure has started in uh, around 1918 by bues and they were uh, initially what kind of instrumentation they were using the, uh, they were uh, it, the telescope used to be binocular optics uh, the monitor was the, the uh, at that time a laparoscopic camera was not attached to it so this is a uh, binocular optics and now we have uh, the gel point fixation devices and uh, angulated cameras uh, where uh, we use two monitors one for assistant and one for uh, like surgeon so uh, this procedure is now called as tamis so following popularization of colorectal cancer screening the incidence of large rectal polyps and early stage cancer is rising the colorectal adenomas are known to lead to uh, colorectal cancer especially when they possess a villous component and they when they grow larger so there are various kinds of uh, colorectal uh, pathologies or rectal pathologies uh, which can present as a polyps or adenomas and they uh, need to be uh, excised completely to avoid any future consequences so uh, routinely this uh, surgical treatment of rectal tumor in case of benign uh, what we go for is uh, sorry
so one slide is not coming there so for benign uh, lesions what we do is local treatment colonoscopic polypectomy endoscopic mucosal dissection endoscopic submucosal dissection uh, transanal techniques these are the old techniques parks method and transanal endoscopic microsurgery and in very small lesions uh, laser or argon plasma coagulation is also used and for malignant ones uh, laparoscopic or open surgical techniques are used so the uh, open or laparoscopic techniques which have been used uh, traditionally they uh, which required an abdominal approach they are associated with considerable uh, mortality rate and morbidity rate because of anastomotic leakage sepsis uh, they may need temporary or permanent stoma uh, these patients may develop genetic urinary disorders sexual dysfunctions and abnormalities in defecation the transanal resection technique was initially introduced by Parks in 1970 which preserves sphincter function and having low morbidity mortality but its limitations are low level of the lesion they can operate using uh, we can operate using Parks retractor till 7 to 8 centimeter from anal verge and it is having limited visualization in 1980 uh, Buse et al introduced the technique of transanal endoscopic microsurgery which allows resection of lesion up to 18 to 20 centimeter from anal verge and associated it is associated with low morbidity safe technique from both oncological and surgical points of view in select patients so uh, various studies have been conducted regarding selection criteria and their outcomes and it has shown that it is a safe technique uh, in the early cancer stages so the indications for times of tamis are uh, initially the elective surgical treatment for benign rectal tumors and malignant tumors in early stages t1 and 0 with good prognostic criteria and other possible indications are new adjuvant or adjuvant uh, treat, uh, treatment in select cases of well to moderately differentiated small size superficial t2 and 0 rectal carcinoma patients and it can be utilized as palliative treatment in patient with more advanced stage of disease who are at high risk surgical uh, cases or who refuse a radical surgery so the indications are uh, excision of rectal polyps for t1 t2 uh, n0 uh, rectal adenomas or adeno uh, adenocarcinomas uh, polyp or tumor of less than size 4 cm even if it uh, it is more than 4 cm size we can go for colonoscopic debulking and then we can uh, consider this patient for time guided excision uh, it should be uh, involving less than 40 percent of circumference and uh, the lesion here uh, for time uh, i have mentioned it as within 10 centimeter of dentate line but for tamis we can go up to 20 centimeter from the dentate line and the lesion should be freely mobile on digital examination it would be a better lesion to exercise uh, so the lesion uh, like it wouldn't have any uh, deep penetrations the other indications apart from uh, adenomas or polyps uh, the tam or tamis can be used for uh, stricture excision uh, for mucosectomy in uh, familial adenomatous polyposis where we can preserve the rectum uh, for uh, large polyps and even for fistulas it has been uh, attempted and it has been uh, verified that uh, it can be utilized for fistula surgeries so uh, when posting for uh, when we prepare these patients for surgery what we should look for is uh, like uh, confirm the all findings on digital rectal examination proctoscopic examination and also on colonoscopic examination uh, assess the extent of the lesion on transrectal ultrasound or MRI pelvis and if possible obtaining preoperative biopsy will be a good option debulking of the last lesion at the time of colonoscopy and uh, PET scan is reserved for evaluation of local recurrence or doubtful mesorectal nodes so coming to the uh, instrumentation part uh, this technique requires uh, use of uh, f apart from routine proctoscope it uh, requires a uh, rectoscope or a sig uh, sigmoidoscope, uh, rectoscope tube, the laparoscopic uh, forceps, uh, which are angulated one, the angulated hook, 
the tamis uh, this requires an operating rectoscope 40 mm in diameter with working length of 15 centimeter uh, I, i'll show these images in next slide and an obturator with that so this is the uh, proctoscope uh, sorry re uh, rectoscope which is used for uh, uh, tamis surgery so it it is available in two lengths depending on the uh, site of the lesion so if it is uh, near to the uh, dentate line the small one, smaller one is used if it is with use of this uh, prolonged uh, this 15 to 20 centimeter uh, proximal lesion can also be tackled by using this kind of uh, rectoscope and this is the obturator tip or the uh, sorry this is the face plate uh, with the uh, multiple inlets for uh, all the purposes for putting the camera uh, for uh, one is for co2 insufflation another for uh, deflation and uh, these are the three ports one for suction cannula and two for operating instruments so uh, this is the uh, angulated hook uh, the all other instru instruments are also uh, like this one only uh, like grasping forceps or scissor this or will be the uh, angulated one and this is the side arm for the attachment of rectoscope so the uh, rectoscope it uh, should not uh, move during the procedure so after all the attachments how does this looks the positioning of the patient it depends on the site of the lesion the uh, uh, this telescope used in this uh, for tamis is angulated oh. yes uh bolta yes okay sorry a uh, so, small break sorry. Uh, sorry for the interruption uh, dr ganga shankar want to announce one thing after 10 minutes the ot live uh, display will be started after dr makam's uh, lecture one minute only i am dr ganga shankar from hyderabad and next uh, fellowship we are organizing in july in karim nagar telangana okay please spread this word to your friends juniors who want to appear for the fellowship Highlights. Highlights. sir highlights, yeah. highlights uh, same like this sir like uh, one day um, basic uh, uh, presentations and live surgical workshop exam followed by viva and again thank you very much solapur surgical society and iscp for giving this opportunity thank you all yes so uh, i was at the point that uh, positioning of the patient so this is how all the armamentarium uh, looks after positioning of the patient the positioning depends on the site of the lesion uh, the it should be 180 degree opposite to the uh, the positioning is like uh, opposite to the uh, lesion so uh, in cases if a lesion is the on the anterior wall patient has to put on the prone jackknife position if it is on the posterior wall patient can be operated in lithotomy position so these are the different positions and after uh, keeping the instruments how uh, th this looks and this is on the monitor like a uh, surgeon looks on the monitor and is operating from the below so this kind of surgical uh, technique they needs uh, basic uh, laparoscopic uh, uh, like surgeon should be well well versed with the basic laparoscopic skills and uh, orientation so for any uh, for uh, this uh, polyps or adenomas for benign uh, 5 mm margin uh, keeping 5 mm margin we can resect it Uh, for malignant lesions one centimeter margin should be kept and 
full thickness excision uh, full thickness excision is expected to be done the extra rectal fat uh, is uh, as a it is taken as a landmark to signify uh, transmural penetration of uh, our uh, dissection and the wound what we have after excision we close it transversely with the running sutures so we use uh, uh, v-lock sutures or we can use routine vicryl suture also so we'll uh, go for some videos uh, how the techniques are performed yes sir For rest of the people, I uh, had that uh, initial they should be uh, uh, yes oriented about what is exactly uh, TAMIS and then we should go uh, in. So here uh, initially uh, submucosal uh, actually in this video it has not been shown the submucosal uh, infiltration of lignocaine with adrenaline has been done and the resection has been started with the hook. Uh, these are all edited videos. Uh, so so actually this, this small procedure it takes a lot of time and there are uh, two more issues with this technique is one is uh, co2 insufflation uh, that it uh, it happens in the pulsation manner uh, with routine our co2 routine co2 insufflator so we have to wait for the exact uh, moment and second while dissecting uh, fogging issue is a little bit more in such cases because of small compartment so here after excision of the polyp for full thickness the uh, transversely the uh, wound has been closed uh, transversely with running sutures so that is the final specimen so this is the mucosectomy performed in uh, family ladenomatous uh, polyposis case So 360 degree entirely uh, circumferential mucosa can be resected very nicely uh, using this technique. This one is the uh, some uh, different uh, unique case which we encountered. A patient, uh, 40, some 48 year young female, she uh, some 15 years back, she had underwent rectal prolapse surgery uh, with posterior uh, mesh plasty and the mesh was uh, extruded into the uh, rectal, uh, this, uh, rectal cavity and patient was suffering with recurrent PR bleed and severe uh, uh, this uh, pain during uh, defecation. So without entering into the uh, abdominal wall totally, we were able to dissect the part of uh, mesh which was extruded into the uh, rectal cavity. As it was most of the extra peritoneal component, the defect need not uh, needed any closure and that patient was doing well for uh, like till follow up for three years she was doing well.
This is another video for uh, rectal polyp where the defect was quite large. The full thickness defect was closed with the running sutures. So, uh, 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 this in, ki in cases of uh, diffic difficulties during uh, surgeries, like what I have mentioned that uh, lack of CO2, maintaining CO2 pressure or because of fogging. So, uh, sometimes we go for a tailor made uh, manure. So, here we have removed the face plate, face plate and just uh, outside we kept the telescope and while watching on the monitor we have performed this surgery. So, uh, we named it as a TEM hybrid, hybrid surgery without using a uh, face plate. Uh, this was a uh, malignant uh, rectal adenoma, uh, sorry, uh, adenocarcinoma. This was biopsy proven rectal adenocarcinoma and it was a T2 lesion. The patient was uh, subjected to uh, post-operative uh, adjuvant chemo radiation. So, in the, uh, the learning curve for this kind of technique is very steep, uh, use of instrumentation uh, with uh, pr uh, getting proper planes and having proper concentration uh, is uh, mandatory. And the operating surgeon should be uh, well versed with the other uh, techniques also for open and laparoscopic surgery because this surgery is uh, uh, it is not uh, we cannot say it is entirely safe it is having it may, might be associated with some complications me we may get in anterior lesions we may get inadvertent peritoneal uh, entry so at that time a surgeon should be able to immediately convert it to laparoscopic surgery if uh, possible or we may need to convert it into an open surgery And the energy device uh, also they should be uh, uh, very good uh, like if possible using 5 mm harmonic for such cases is a uh, very good option. So this is how the v -lock sutures are being placed. And in such cases uh, routine uh, this triangulation as we uh, do in laparoscopic surgery the triangulation is not hello, possible hello. in check, uh, this check, area check, because check. the uh, camera as well as the check, instrument check, sound check. Hello. camera and instrument they are in line uh, 10 15 minutes 10 10 minutes yes sir. just take five five minutes then five minutes just i will finish it in five minutes Yes. So the closure has been done for this case. So so even uh, for patients uh, in whom we perform pouch surgeries, so pouchoscopy can be performed with uh, TEM and if any suspicious uh, uh, nodules or polyps are there, they all can be excised. So this is an example of TEM guided pouchoscopy.
and uh, my uh, another topic was uh, uh, recent advances in ca rectum so i will like uh, i wanted to show uh, another video in that presentation but i will show in the same video okay sir i will just show this one video yes This is a question to Chute sir, whether we can do, uh, uh, what is uh, the first question is to Makam, what is the proximal extent of lesions you can deal with this? 15 to 20 centimeter uh, proximal to dentate line, proximal. till that uh, level we can deal. Okay. Yes. So, uh, because the cost of the equipment and setup is uh, uh, very high. Yes, sir. And that, that, that is uh, one of the challenges. Yeah, and uh, and uh, yes, the number of cases mm -hmm. uh, we get, uh, which are ideal for these procedures, are very less. So, the cost effectiveness is a problem. So, I can, uh, I want to ask Dr. Chute, sir, whether uh, ch the Chute, sir's proctosoap will help at least to deal with the lesions up to uh, 7 8 centimeter from the dented line. In fact, we were thinking of making this type of instrument using that laparoscopic cork is there, where our pores uh, can go. You the know gel it. point. Gel point, yes. correct. Hmm. So that cork we used to use in our proctoscope, where there was no operative, you know, ridge was there. It was just tunnel of same length, one or two size, you know, we used to make it. And uh, problems about the, you know, gas, what he says, you know, that was there and all the time I was getting irritated, so I stopped doing, I made an open ridge there and approach for the prolapse rectum. And I, we can do whatever, you know, lesions are there of that area around, you can rotate proctoscope and do it, no problem. And uh, small polyps or small things, we can always do it. But extensive lesion like a villous carcinoma or wider, you know, polyposis, better we should not deal with because that proctoscope is good for putting some sutures. And uh, uh, with this also, Themis and other thing, they are doing prolapse sector nowadays. Few papers are there. Thank you, sir. And other thing is uh, whether we need to do a CT scan before doing this procedure because to rule out endrocele and deep uh, pouch of Douglas. Yes, uh, in the initial, initial workup, I have mentioned MRI pelvis uh, for yes. the same reason. Uh. Uh, in MRI pelvis, we get soft tissue uh, demarcation uh, very clearly. So, MRI is preferred over CT and if in case of un unavailability of MRI, we can go for CT also. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. We have one uh, live surgery of fistula, which will be performed by Dr. Madhukar Pai, which will be uh, starting with uh, meanwhile. Yeah, can uh, somebody describe the history of the patient? Are there somebody here in the OT to describe the history of the patient? Uh, good afternoon all. Am I audible? Ladukar sir, Chute sir, am I audible? Hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I am, uh, you are audible, very well audible and visible as well. Okay. So can you tell us a brief history of this patient please? Yeah, then uh, if uh, I, I myself will tell the history of the patient. It started some three months back. Patient had a small swelling in the perianal region which got subsided with antibiotic use. But he continued to have recurrences of the same illness. And one month back, it ruptured and pus discharge happened. And uh, on examination, he has got an external opening somewhere around uh, one centimeter, uh, one to two centimeters away from the anal canal. 
and an internal opening at 6 o'clock which is some 1 centimeter inside the anal canal. So it is a low fistula which is some uh, starting from 7 o'clock extending to the 6 o'clock, the internal opening. Mostly the external opening is situated in the intersphincter groove. An ultrasound evaluation was done which is showing a low transphincter fistula. So what rest. Is, what is your plan doctor now? Uh, if it is transphinctric and the external opening is very away from the intersphinctric groove, we will be able to perform a lift procedure. But my clinical examination, I found it very close to the intersphinctric plane, so that a fistulectomy will be the procedure of choice for this patient. Let us see under anesthesia and let us take an opinion on it. Okay. So what is your uh, modality of choice, imaging modality of choice before uh, fistula surgery? It is an ultrasound or a MRI? I usually go ahead with an MRI. Ultrasound is also a very useful modality because at times when the people are uh, patients are not able to undergo an MRI because of either claustrophobia or either some foreign body in them like uh, some plates and uh, screws which are kept in their hands. All those cases we are going with ahead with an ultrasound also in our place and ultrasound also is a very good modality. But uh, it's a apart different. from that, the best modality for a fistula is under anesthesia, operative surgeon's finger. Yeah, I agree with you. But in what cases you would like to go for imaging like MRI? We go with imaging like MRI for all. Okay. In our center, we usually operate only with MRI. And those who are not fit for MRI because of the aforementioned reason, we go ahead with a transrectal ultrasound also. Okay. And clinically we have found transrectal ultrasound also as useful as MRI. But transrectal ultrasound has got its own difficulty, like that big probe has to be yeah. passed through. And while MRI doesn't have that. And we should have a good radiologist who is... Good radiologist should trained. be there yeah. who are, trained, who are trained in that. They should be able to differentiate between which is external sphincter, which is internal sphincter and what is the information which we need to have. Only if the radiologist knows us and that is why yesterday also we were mentioning like if possible sit with the radiologist and have a yes, I, 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 draw a map in front of the radiologist. That will be a better always thing. Always better, yes, definitely. At times I have seen some reports like it is pylonidal sinus. But uh, when I went through the MRI, I felt that it is below the coccyx. Pylonidal sinus below coccyx may not be possible. When I sat with our own radiologist and discussed, then it was a fistula in ano. Yeah. But he felt it is pylonidal sinus because internal opening he was not seeing. That is what he is mentioning. Okay. So if internal opening is not there, it is a sinus. And if it is a sinus behind rectum, for his knowledge it is pylonidal sinus. So this misconcepts can be there between the radiologist and the surgeon because they are not operating the patient. Right. So it is very important to sit with the radiologist yeah. and understand the images and uh, uh, it is better to have a diagram in yeah. front of you uh, yeah. before operating the such type of uh, patients. And above all, rely on your finger. That's true. Rely on your finger because I have seen some patients who are diagnosed as fistula. No external opening is there, no internal opening is there. I felt I am not getting a tract also. I just told, counseled the patient, repeatedly the patient visited me for two years I waited. Then he developed an external opening and then I operated on him. So you waited for the external opening to appear? Yeah, only after that we will be able to, at least with the finger we should feel a cord. Without the, without that, how we are going yeah, yeah, to approach? Yeah. You please start and talk. Actually, okay. uh, I thought uh, uh, the patient is getting ready. No, the patient is ready. Uh, I want a stool. I have the help of staff nurse, Jayashri and Dr. Mangesh. And our anesthesiologist is Dr. Joshi. Uh, Joshi, sir, uh, I should want a head low. Head low.
Dr. Pai. Yeah. Please continue operating. Uh, yeah, I am. I am. Stop while operating. Uh, no, I am operation. asking them to give a good position. Okay. And also, I want that leg also to be flexed a bit. This leg also needs to be both the legs needs to be flexed to the chest of the patient. Here, somebody can uh, relax this one. So, if it is relax. a deep, if it is a deep seated anal mm. uh, opening. Yeah. Do you use uh, some sort of uh, scraping to pull, pull, uh, pull it uh, laterally? Uh, sir, yeah, we can use it. Okay. Ah, relax and let this leg be moving to the chest of the patient. Okay, tighten it. Tighten it. Tight it well. The leg is in the right position, right? It is not hitting any, anywhere. Same thing repeat on this side also. Yes, sister, give me jelly. The first step will be examination under anesthesia. Let them give a very good position here. Hello, Madhu. Yes, sir. Dr. Chut here. Yes, sir. See, giving position. Yeah. Lithotomy also here what you are seeing, your mm. fissula is totally, you know, hidden behind the, between the two. Yes sir, that is why I asked them to bend the knee towards yeah. the chest of the patient. Yeah, Sister, agree. little more again. I agree, there you know. Yeah. Uh, if they keep the ankles at the knee rest. Yeah. Then buttocks will come totally out. Yeah. And they will spread as what you want. But yes. now already they have given position, yeah. you have to stretch and start the case, no problem. Okay, sir. But next time, whenever you see, hmm. the, uh, knees are kept on the knee rest, hmm. ask them to keep ankles at the knee rest, tie hmm. there hmm. and pull buttocks as much as you want. Okay, Even sir. 6 to 12 inches buttock you can pull outside, okay. where buttocks will be fully open ah. and you will see anal verge at least a centimeter open, hmm. so that will be the beautiful position for any surgery. Not yeah. only fusual I am talking, yeah. but it can be for the humerides, prolapse rectum or anything, that position is very good. Sir, head low also ah, a bit now, more. Now you have seen, yeah. somebody has to stretch this. Somebody thing. has to stretch yeah. it, So keep it stretched. I think you have luxury of having so many assistants. Yes, and sir. In my private, I don't have any assistant. Sister culture, sir. Culture swab. I want to take a culture. Uh, when, whenever we see a pus, if you don't have a retra uh, re people to retract, you can use a strap. Uh, adhesive strapping. Uh, adhesive strapping can be used. Yeah. Cotton adhesive strappings. Sister, a pus culture swab. Whenever we Sir. see pus anywhere, always remember to take a culture from that. Sister, swab is there? Swab? Eh? Oral sex syringe de do mujhe. Just sex syringe de do. Small syringe. Dr. Pai. Yes, sir. Your audience is eagerly waiting to start your surgery. Yes, sir. Swab hai aapke paas? Swab hai. Just take a swab from this tip. A tip se le lo aap swab. Sister cannula. Now here it is the external opening is at a 7 o'clock position. It is a straight tract going here and the internal opening is at a 6 o'clock position. I can feel the tract also at 6 o'clock position. I have two options here. One is a lift procedure where I can make an incision at this point and then tackle it. But an incision here and an excision of coring of this tract, everything is very near the interstitial groove. So this will not be a good case for a lift surgery. I think for this p uh, patient, fistulectomy will be the best, better procedure. Yes, for a low transfer the fistula, yeah. fistulectomy gives better result than a lift procedure. Lift procedure. Yes. Uh, no, uh, I just want hydrogen peroxide, 1 cc. And I want a partial scope there after hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Just 
Okay. okay. So both are mixed together. I just want a cannula. I don't want a needle. I want a cannula. Which I have told. Pink cannula. Pink cannula. Cannula only, no needle. So, Dr. Yeah. Pai? I always put a pink cannula into the tract and then instill hydrogen peroxide and methylene blue into the tract. Wipe sister. Give me a not coming from the anus. It is I coming. Yes, yes. It, it is, is coming. It is coming. Initially, I didn't put a scope because at times it can block the dye entering inside. Yes. Give me a partial viewing scope. I will be dilating. Uh, give me a uh, lignocaine jelly a bit. I will be dilating it gently. Not much dilatation is given. Only dilatation which is needed to insert the proctoscope is put. Sister, give me a proctoscope. Yeah, this this is fine. This is fine. This is what I ask. Give me some more head low. Give me some more head low. Yes. Uh, Dr. Chute sir is saying, the each for each case you need a good dilatation. Yes, sir. But uh, in fistula case, if we dilate it more, now the dilatation is adequate for the patient because this this instrument is can you see this instrument yeah this is going in comfortably no more dilatation is required dilatation is needed but it should not be more so that we are breaking up the tract also it should be it, dilatation is needed for every anal procedure hold can you show us the internal opening yes give me hydrogen peroxide little more sister Give me hydrogen peroxide little more. Yeah. No, in the uh, syringe. Oh, this one. This is this is fine. This is fine. No, with the cannula, sister. Thank you. Sister. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Can you focus inside? Can the light focus inside? Can you see inside? Yes, we can see it, but... Uh, but the dye is not coming inside now. It's because of the stretching. Yeah, because of the speculum. Because of the stretching, it is not Can coming inside. Camera come in bit inside and uh, show us properly. Yeah, the ca uh, Can we get a bit more head low, sir? Sister, non tooth thumb, non tooth thumb. Because methylene blue is coming from inside now. Light, light concentrate here in the anal canal. Uh, you can use just uh, hydrogen peroxide as well, uh, but if uh, because sometimes methylene blue can spoil the field, and uh, it's sometimes difficult to uh, Give me uh, see peroxide. the properly uh, internal opening. Can I uh, get an artery forceps? Yes. Position, yes. Can I get an artery forceps? Yeah, hold it like this. The internal opening is somewhere at this uh, this location. Yeah. Uh, do you feel the tract? Yeah. Throat? 
the track can be felt along this line so that means it is a low transparent fluid yeah. and uh, and here is the internal opening yes uh, uh, doctor Pari. can you see the internal opening now yes yes Pari yeah uh, very nicely demonstrated yeah. But just put finger hmm. above the dented line. Do you feel any visual attract by finger? Just see it before you uh, start doing it. Can you see the hydrogen peroxide yeah, coming from inside? It is. It seems that it is coming from top also. Yeah. So what Jutesar want to uh, emphasize is uh, is there any intersplintric extension? I am putting my the entire finger in, and yeah. this is a bimanual palpation. Good. Good. I can feel the external opening, I can feel the tract coming here and I can feel the internal opening also at Good. this junction. No other tract is felt neither to the right side of it, neither to the left, left side of it. Here a bit of induration is felt at this region. Uh, yeah. On the left side a bit of induration is felt but on the right nothing else is felt. So left means I am telling about this region. Correct, correct. Here I am getting a bit of induration and that forms the internal opening here. So that's why now you will, you know, get total idea about by finger palpation only. Yeah. That by manual palpation is yes, yes. better than any of the Im in, uh, investigation modalities. Give me a knife followed by monopola. And now monopola. Dr. Pai. Yes, sir. Would you like to infiltrate before uh, surgery with uh, xylocaine adrenaline or plain adrenaline? No, sir. Because patient is already under spinal, right? No, it's not for uh, anesthesia. It's for the hemostasis, I am asking. No, sir. Because what I feel is, if there is bleeding, I will go on controlling the bleeding rather than I will... So, in the post-operative period, there won't be much bleed. No. I think it gi it gives good field vis uh, field. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, in the prolapse I usually do it so. Okay. But when it comes to the fistula surgery or any other surgery, hemorrhoidal surgeries, I don't do it, sir. Hmm. And I want one finger of you to be separating this. Sister mop. Are you uh, going to do a fistulotomy or fistulectomy? Fistulectomy, sir. Okay. So, to total coring of the tract? Yeah. Okay. It is not working. Okay. No, it is. Ah. Yeah. Ask Oh, Vegra, sir. The recurrence rate of fistulotomy are less than fistulectomy. Sister, this cat. Pencil is not good, sister. It is uh, switching on and off in between. At time it works, at time it doesn't. Now it is not working. Uh, uh, yes, Dr. Gatoli is telling that you can use foot pad if it's no, hand switch is not working. Okay, then uh, give me a foot switch also. That will be fine. Yes, sister. Tell me when it is ready. Is it ready? No, it is. Hmm, give it to me. Okay. Uh. A bit of contrast extravasation is seen posteriorly. Yeah. Mm, thumb. Yeah, it is with me. Mm. That's the reason Pull some it. people prefer just hydrogen peroxide rather than a methylene blue because if you get extra vasodated, uh, you land up with the do dissecting more and uh, yeah. sizing more. But this extra vasation and tract both are felt different. This extra vasation we will see along with the small venules 
it is uh, just like lines it will be going in but when it come to the mm, mob sister uh, sister instead of Alice you can take my thumb and keep it away don't apply Alice there take my thumb and keep it keep this away hold What we are seeing here is the external sphincter muscle. Yeah. And laterally here is the fat also is seen. Can we see the external sphincter muscle? Can the color difference can be made out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And here it is the fat. Take only yeah, that part. The hand is coming in the way, so we are not able to see what is happening. Whole sister. Yeah. Mob sister. Can it be seen well? This is muscle fibers here. Yeah. Which are the fibers of the external sphincter. And here it is the fat which is coming. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, okay. Whenever a small bleeder is there, yeah. take care of the bleeder at that point of time itself, so that it doesn't... There is pus collection here. Yes. It is abscess. And here also we need to be a bit careful that you here is this is a point where you can get an intraspintric extension sometimes. Yeah. I felt a small induration this side, leave sister. Small induration here. That now with the retraction, I can feel that induration at this point. Here is the induration. That was the induration of this abscess. Yeah, yeah, very good. Now you will include that induration. Yes, sir. Correct. Very good dissection, Dr. Madhukar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief, sir. That could be infected anal gland. Yes, sir. Uh, In the intersynthetic plane, it was. Yeah, yeah. Now that inflammatory tissue is in my hand. Very good. And here we can see that I am reaching the internal opening also at this point. Here is the internal opening of the. Very good. Fistula. Yeah, yeah. This one. The rest, everything which the methylene blue staining was there is, once the patient is given head low, after here the methylene blue will track onto the inner aspect. So, along with the staining of methylene blue, always try to feel by manually whether some extension is there. It is not like after putting methylene blue, everything blue you have to remove. 
Never do that. Only remove that which is indurated. And preserve these muscles as, as much as possible. This is uh, uh, infected anal gland here, what you are excited Yeah. Is. That has to come out completely. Yes, sir. Now the internal opening is taken care. Okay, Goss. Mob system. Thank you, sister. Okay, mop again. Now, can you see? I have gone over the fistulous opening. This is the internal opening, and this is the abscess cavity, and this is the tract. I have not taken the abscess cavity fully because I will take it from here. Here, a bit of methylene blue was seen, that is why I left it there, and I am going from another point. Okay, mop. I can feel the levator also. The sling of the levator can be felt. It is away from the induration which I am palpating now. One more. Okay. The sling of the retractor comes somewhere at this region. Here is the sling of the retractor that is coming. Sister mop. Can I get a... Mm, just leave it. Can I get a bipolar? Anyone from the audience or defect want to ask something to Dr. Madhukar Pai? Opinion? No issue, sister. Any other place there? Okay, mop. This side. Can you give me one more Alice sister? Mm -hmm. 
good hemostasis is always needed because only then the anatomy will become clear. This is the internal opening, this is the external opening and this is the entire fistless tract here. Uh, give me the bipolar again. System mop again. Mop. This bleeding is not at all a bleed, uh, much bleeding, but only after control of the bleeding we will be able to identify. Here comes the levator any. And this is the external sphincter and this is the tract which I can cut here safely. It is away from the levator. Hello. Yes, sir. Your hand is coming in the way, so we will not able to see. The, can the uh, camera be... Uh, this is external online? sphincter. Yes. Here partly external sphincter is cut. Here comes the internal sphincter okay. and this is levator, I will uh, hook it out, like that sling is levator, which is more felt than seen, Yes. with a bimanual I can feel it and see, I can just hook with the finger, I can pull it and I can feel and see. Yeah, very nice demonstration, Dr. Pai, very good. Monopolar, change to monopolar system. Coagulation. Okay. Mop system. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. He has kept the specimen in place. Hold. Yeah. Uh, Chute sir is asking to keep uh, gospies there for some time. Take out the specimen. Okay. And then later you can deal with the bleeding. Uh, I just wanted uh, with, with the bleeding I can manage but the only issue is I cannot show the sphincters differently from there. No, no, already you are dealing with the, you know, intersphinctic abscess there. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you need not to worry about showing. Uh, just uh, show here. Can we see small venules are taking, yes, taking the methylene blue with that? Yeah, yeah. That is not the tract. It is just the extraversation. Yes, correct, correct. No need to remove it entirely. So, at least you should not inject methylene blue with a force actually. Ah, it should not be injected with force. force yes. And with some time the venules will absorb the methylene blue and you will be seeing methylene blue also in the Urine. tissues as the time passes. So, always feel and see where is the tract and remove the tract. Now, I am dividing it from the external sphincter. Here also a bit of uh, methylene blue through the venules you can see and I am dividing it. Yeah, so. Okay. So the tract is removed entirely. This is the external opening. Here is the internal opening. This one is the internal opening. Can you see? Yes. And this is the abscess which we were feeling. At the 5 o'clock we were feeling an induration and this was the tract. Now, per se the fistlectomy procedure is now over. I just give a wash and see if the bleeding is controlled, all those things we can see and keep a pack if required and come out. But what will happen to this external sphincter? Once it heals, this scar tissue, the patient can have little soiling of fecal matter happening through that. 
which is called a keyhole type of deformity of the anal canal. So it is always wiser to suture back the external sphincter muscles so that that deformity doesn't happen. Saline for me to give a wash. A bro uh, that broken needle also you give me. That is the tip which is you removed. That needle also you give me. And keep a kidney tray and with force we can wash. Syringe, wash, with force I need to wash. And I want a 3-0 vicryl or PDS or even 2-0 vicryl round needle. No hydrogen peroxide. That needle, where is the needle? Uh, sir, which suture material is preferred for the suturing over there? We have done a lot with the Vicro sutures as well as PDS sutures. All gives good results. But the, as per theory, if we want the permanent thing, then PDS comes into view. Because the scar tissue can develop lack of power in a later period. Otherwise, once heals and uh, the scar tissue is formed, then PDS and vicryl also will do. The problem of PDS is it takes time to absorb and sometimes uh, it can uh, come up. Uh, yeah, and it can form a, it can create a fistula. Uh, it can uh, uh, create a fistula. It Two zero vicryl round needle. There is active bleeder from the lateral. Three zero vicryl round needle. Good. Okay. Sister, two zero or three zero? Yeah. No, I want a smaller needle. This. Yeah, you give three zero vicryl round needle. That is what is that vicryl plus? Hmm. Give me a gauze. Cutting needle chahiye. Round needle hi chahiye. Choti needle chahiye. Not 4-0. I think 3-0 you showed me. That is reverse cutting needle. 2-0 round needle. Okay, you give me this one. Bipolar. Sister footstep bipolar. And remove the uh, saline and all. Uh, concentrate the light here. Yeah, we can see the blade there. I have a question yeah. to you. Is yeah. there any need to uh, suture the sphincter because this is a very low transparent fistula? It is, uh, it is always good to suture the sphincter. Yeah, I can understand uh, uh, it is better to reduce the size by doing mass supplication. Hmm. Raw area, but uh, there is. Uh, it is always good to suture the sphincter because otherwise some uh, deformity develops. The patient will not will not have incontinence, but uh, at just a pea-sized fecal matter will come out through that unknowingly. So he will soil his undergarments. No problem. Clean sister tip is. Now it is stopped. That is why these procedures like lift everything has come because the sphincter needs to be saved even if it is external sphincter. We can see the external sphincter. This is only a partial cut of the external sphincter which is there. But if we close the sphincter, it will give good results. Sister Michael, you hold it my, this my way. My experience is if you close the sphincter, mm. 
there is some fecal matter which can go in behind the sphincter in between sometime and that can cause cause of yeah. infection i i got your point yes. and that is why i wanted to show what happens is if we take bites like this there will be some point which is left here and it can lead to recurrence of the fistula that is what you meant right sir that is what if you we close here yeah. and there is a gap here which is remaining so that a fistula persistence can happen yes, above the sutures so whenever you are taking this sutures take from the muscle can you see can all of you see yeah yeah and from the depth you have to take yeah. so that there is no spaces left behind yes. above the suture line yes the problem is uh, if there is a liquid stool mm. there is always chance that uh, there are some uh, spaces yeah uh, that uh, that uh, stool remains there and that can cause infection later abscess and then fistula that is a problem yes sir that spaces should not be left yeah, behind yeah, sir so places if left that is a problem so that's why a fistulectomy yeah. uh, a Take fistulotomy off. is uh, preferred over the fistulectomy the reason is there is less raw area hmm. you can just we have to just deal with the granulation tissue by scoping here the raw area is bigger with a fistulectomy sir but uh, removal of that inflamed tissue is always something which is acceptable yeah. here also can you appreciate sir i am not coming out oh. my needle is not coming out i am taking the depth of the tissue and coming out from the opposite side okay thank you sister फ्यूचर एंड depth yes. that is something which we have to always practice now let me, I, i will be taking a second suture also to take the subcutaneous part of the sphincter then also how i will be taking it will be sister thumb thumb kitne to remove sister yeah hmm. hold this one you hold this side sister this one this side now this is the subcutaneous portion of the external sphincter i will never take a bite here i will be taking a bite from the depth which was which i had initially taken i come out through the external sphincter these are box figure of uh, that is box type sutures outside in and i am going through the depth hello yes sir this is a subcuticular stitch or what no the muscles itself the yes, subcutaneous sir. portion of the external sphincter okay huh. this is what i i want to name as AWR sir, anal wall reconstruction. In Agra conference also I saw these procedures. Videos were shown by. Uh, I don't remember the name of the surgeon who demonstrated these procedures, but the suturing of the sphincter. Yeah, so there should not be any cavity between the sutures and the depth yeah, that, that is, is the principle of it 
once these sutures are put there is no need to suture the skin because skin will heal easily okay sir yeah okay but if there is a hanging skin or there are some tags yeah that needs to be removed that needs to be i am talking about this patient no need to put any skin sutures yes the what you are talking about primary sphincter repair yeah i think that is recommended for a high transparent fistula when you are uh, ex, uh, cutting external sphincter more than two third yes sir and that in that scenario it is recommended to do a primary sphincter repair yes sir but but here yeah. if the especially the posterior defects when the defect is posterior, posterior. okay there is something called yeah, yeah keyhole deformity keyhole yeah. deformity that's true but there is no incontinence for the patient this yes. primary sphincter repair is for incontinence yes yes these patients will not have incontinence but what is there is they will tell you after going uh, work and coming back there is just pea sized fecal matter on my undergarments okay what is the post operative care for the wound you uh, prefer sir just like any other fistulectomy procedure sits bath and uh, Lignocaine can be applied inside the anal canal before going to stools. Then uh, sits bath with betadine lotion, bipolar sister. Sits bath with uh, betadine lotion at least 20 minutes, three times daily. But with betadine lotion, patients complain of uh, itching, perianal itching. Yep. Some, sometimes rash. Actually, it is recommended yeah. just to have a warm, lukewarm. Whatever it is. Yeah. Some people what they tell is the uh, water is not clean, water they get is not clean. Then I will tell at least put that all or something there and use it on their preference. Some do want to have potassium permanganate, some people the, what they like is just putting salt, rock salt. So whatsoever their convenience and whatsoever the availability, six bath should be at least for 20 minutes. Now I can feel the levator also in my hand and the external sphincter also there there is no gap between the levator and the external sphincter yes sir yes dr pai uh, do you send this specimen always for the histopathology or 100% or? okay 100% and the culture also will be sent pus will be sent for culture okay okay sir uh, i will never keep a pack i will just pe uh, keep a piece of gauze soaked in lignocaine inside which okay. They can remove after two hours or three hours. And the procedure gets over now. Just okay. give me a proctoscope. So I can do, see inside. Do you use laxative post-operatively? Laxatives will be given at least for six weeks. Which laxative you use? Camafin plus or peg day. Okay. Uh, some 15 ml twice daily. Which will be reduced gradually. When they start going to work, I will reduce the amount of laxatives. Some people prefer tablets only, then I will give Jervisa tablets. Fiber content rich things will be preferred only after one or two weeks. Okay. Uh, sister, just give me a stitch. Chute, sir. Give Can me a this stitch. This be a proctoscope used for the anal dilatation, sir. It will give a controlled dilatation. Ah. Give me another gauze soaked in betadine ointment. You are talking about radial uh, Give me a control. Betadine soaked gauze. Yeah, but can this be used, sir? Can this be used for a fissure or this can be used? That's what I'm telling. <laughs> it will have a better control than a finger. For the fissure, now give a pad. Uh -huh. Bye, sir. Uh -huh. Pad. This suture will, uh, this gauze will never go inside. So once you remove, everything will come out. Mm. Fine, sister. This stitch is not for the skin. This is only for the pad and gauze, right? Keep one more pad, sister. Now we are coming to the end of this session. Cut. So I would request uh, Dr. Gatole to... Uh, 
Thank you, Start sister. Keep one more pad you, and stick on. Is my mic off, sister? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, thank you all. Thank you uh, for a wonderful demonstration. Thank you all, sir, for the and, uh, and the organizers also for and, uh, giving me this opportunity, thank sir. Thank you all, OT staff and anesthesia team. Yeah. Yeah. Please come to the auditorium, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Doctor Pai. Yes, sir. You have very well demonstrated all all steps of the fistula. Very good. Very good. We are very thankful to you. Thank you, sir. Your appreciation and your blessing, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sister, clean. Clean there and... Yes. Uh, my dear friends, on behalf of International Society of Coloproctology and uh, Solapur Surgical Society and uh, myself, Mahatma Bhashwashar Medical Foundation and with the cooperation of the Noble Hospital, we have organized this workshop and CM, CME and also the fellowship examination. I really very thankful for the registering this configuration and I hope this CME will be very useful to revise the recent advances in coloproctology. I take this opportunity especially thanks Dr. Chute, the founder president of ISCP, Sir. Dr. Ladukar, secretary of International Society of Coloproctology, and I and and the uh, Dr. Kanekar, Dr. Prashant Rahate, all the way he came from the Nagpur by flight to Pune and he travelled a lot, uh, uh, large distance. I am also thankful to the faculty members of the Solapur Surgical Society, especially Dr. Shupuje, President, Secretary, and all the members of Solapur Surgical Society. I thankful to the uh, Dr. Sudhir Deshmukh, sir, Dean of Dr. V.A. Medical College, for accepting our invitation for inauguration and he has guided us uh, for the, the better success in such uh, uh, workshop and all that things. I acknowledge, help, expand, extend my acknowledgement to the, all the registered candidates who have registered for the uh, fellowship. There are uh, some uh, deficiencies may be there, but as the knowledge is concerned, we have tried our level best to give the all recent advances to you. I hope the fellowship persons have uh, really appeared for the second time in the examination and uh, Dr. Chute will uh, guide you very nicely. Uh, any event cannot be organized without the financial support. So, specially thanks to pharma companies. I request the pharma company PEP to come forward. Uh, Rode? Good. Uh, Dr. Jamadar uh, from the Genesis Biotech, I request uh, Dr. Shupuje to hand over the bouquet. Dr. Sujil Chinchure from the JB Chemicals. I request Dr. Sarvesh Kadam to hand over the bouquet. Eight the light loud? Ah, yes. I request any sub the Satish Joshi Without any uh, repeated request, uh, we are in this hall within three to four days only. We are planning to take the uh, CME uh, program in the Eshodara Hospital, but the Eshodara Hospital has got a very big, very lavish auditorium and some 150 uh, delegates are accommodated and they generously allowed us to take the hall free, auditorium free, uh, the veranda, the all, per, the area is very lavish and very uh, good thing. But uh, next time, if sir allow me to take any Worldcon and something else, I will... Uh, Chute sir, we are planning to have a very big setup in Sholapur. We have got already. But the capacity of the hall is more than 150. So that depends on 
नहीं नहीं विदाउट सपोर्ट ऑफ यू एंड विदाउट यूर ब्लेसिंग्स आई के नॉट डू नो नो आई वॉन्ट यूर ओनली ब्लेसिंग सर हाँ या या लैक ऑफ टाइम लैक ऑफ टाइम एंड रिपीटेड टू थ्री कॉन्फ्रेंसिस वेर देयर इन द मंथ ऑफ जून एंड आई वेरी सॉरी टू टेल दैट ही इज वेरी कोऑपरेटिव एंड ही हेज परमिटेड टू हैव दैट कॉन्फ्रेंस इन दैट एरिया इन स्पेट ऑफ दैट ऑल्सो आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल फॉर हिज कोऑपरेशन द सी एम ई वर्कशॉप कैन नॉट बी हैपन ओवर नाइट इट रिक्वायर्स मिटिकुलस प्लैनिंग एंड एक्जीक्यूट फॉर द डिटेल सो स्पेशल थैंक्स टू डॉक्टर अमजद सैयद अमजद सर इज थोड़ा बोलो तक आई ताले अमजद सैयद हैज गिवन दिस प्रिमाइस विदाउट एनी मच टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन एंड ही दिस वॉज द वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट सी एम ई वॉट ही टोल्ड मी दैट इज वेरी generously this hospital has started only 6 month back only and this was the first cme they have conducted in this uh, institute and uh, yesterday the dean sir also promised him to make the this institute recognized for mmc purpose also and uh, i hope uh, he will he has got still more dreams to conduct such activities and uh, he has given lot of uh, cooperation i have no words uh to thanks this person but uh, he will be just coming uh and uh, the most of the things i may not uh, fulfill all the requirements for accommodation i could not uh, give uh the food arrangement stay arrangement i have tried my level best to fulfill all the requirements with the blessings of all of you pardon me for any mistake or any shortfall in my uh, service you with a big heart you accept me and uh, another thing is that there is blessing from the international society of coloproctology especially dr chute ladukar and prashant rate they told me even if there are 20 candidates we will come even there are 50 delegates we will come you go ahead up to uh, the first of J- june i was worried whether i can conduct the cme successfully or not and daily there are changes in mind and uh, always sleepless night for 5 uh, 6 days uh, and at the uh, the uh, from fifth one up to fifth a uh, lot of people have registered themselves and encourage me to conduct this cme uh, i am very much thankful to the all the persons and uh, this is possible not only from the lectures and the the proper students who are enthusiastic to know the detailed things thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, giving me to serve you to my best of knowledge and any some pitfalls are there i accept that fault on my side and i will try to improve myself and uh, with your blessings uh, give me strength in future to have the world con in this place with the blessings of all we should also percolate this information to your colleagues you inform those also we have not wasted a single minute of your uh, the time the today only the uh, fellowship examination has started at 7 o'clock all candidates come at 7 o'clock not only that all the teachers say they have came here at 6:45 to see the arrangement they are about 65 age but they are so prepared for the program and i think the question and answer series was so good uh, that like a revision of our knowledge and uh, i think uh, the fellowship uh, people have really appearing in the second page of our lifestyle and uh, if any fellowship wants to say few words i request one person to come to talk on only one minute if anybody is ready yeah, yeah. yeah. please yeah. come yes Before fellowship that. sir fellowship person no no what you feel please come ha you talk to us because uh, we want to know your feelings so that we can give better services please uh, first of all uh, myself dr prakash from kalburgi 
uh, first of all i would like i would like to thank uh, uh, chute sir and uh, uh, sir to for uh, 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 for this uh, conducting this uh, workshop in solapur so that i i can uh, come and attend very easily within this uh, two days and uh, uh, when i came here uh, i i it it was a very uh, big opportunity to uh, learn uh, uh, the chute's procedure uh, so that uh, uh, now we can uh, uh, practice uh, the uh, uh, chute's procedure and we can uh, bring a change in the uh, hemorrhoid hemorrhoidectomy this one uh, which would be very much helpful to the patients so that uh, and uh, uh, we get to learn uh, many more uh, new things here uh, thank you dr shubhuje few words and uh, exam was uh, very much informative and uh, it was very much practical in day to day lives uh, we see many cases but uh, uh, many thing many concepts are uh, wrong we learn many new concepts and uh, uh, this one uh, so the exam was uh, very much uh, helpful and informative and uh, overall i have forgotten to take the name of shedzale who has audio, audio visual. visual in charge overnight still on fourth of the night there was nothing and on fourth night he has prepared everything everything is new arrangement is a i give big hand to shedzale he has audio visual persons and uh, even he has recorded all our programs and i request uh, dr uh, sorry shedzai sir to come on the dais to accept our blessings i request dr chute sir to uh, give the bouquet to uh, shedzai sir hard worker person ha no event cannot be complete without the proper arrangement proper planning and proper support from the bottom of heart uh, my friend dr amjad sayyad he has given me this area free of cost and it is very appreciated that he allowed me to use the ot premises his staff his uh, all administrative people and even you 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 if you just point me which place you want i will arrange we have changed the dining dining part changed the auditorium has changed reception has changed from fifth every uh, two hours we are changing our ideas but he has tolerated us like anything <laughs> and uh, such a fluctuating things even uh, if you tell me one hour i can manage this uh, this uh, as a is being a, a cardiologist he has taken not only uh, care of my brain and my heart also and i am very thankful to amjad sir i request dr chute sir to uh, no bouquet is not important sir just sir the token token but he has given me a lot of support i am very much thankful for his generous cooperation thank you very much and at the last i request all the members for their attending the conference without the delegates candidate registration no conference will be successful if the teachers are good students should be also enthusiastic to uh, come to the conclusion thank you very much uh, i request you puja sir to have few words and uh, after that we will go for the lunch i i take this opportunity uh, as a iscp member as well as a member of solapur surgical society to thank the man behind this show dr uh, prakash gatule sir who has single handedly almost single handedly or organized uh, this meeting though we were uh, we were with him but uh, honestly the most of the work he has done and he has a uh, yeah yeah and he has a team of uh, a few of our colleagues dr sarvesh kadam dr rode <laughs> I, I, I cannot i cannot value the his uh, help yes, to me yes i i request all the way up to midnight i request uh, dr chute sir please 
कम फॉरवर्ड एंड फिल स्टेट डॉक्टर गटुले सर डॉक्टर सर्वेश एंड डॉक्टर रोडे तुम्हारे आशीर्वाद सर आशीर्वाद थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो विथ दिस आई एम ओवर सर थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेल सी दिस वॉज नॉट अ सरप्राइज आय नो डॉक्टर गटोळे ॲज अ प्रकाश यु नो प्रत्येक ठिकाणी प्रकाश पाडतो असतो आणि मी जेव्हा वेन एव्हर आय युज टू टॉक टुडे धिस विल अरेंज टुडे धिस हॉल विल अरेंज दॅट हॉल विल अरेंज वेन आय वॉज डिस्कसिंग माय म्हटलं कुठले घोटाळे चालले म्हटलं घोटाळे नाही गटोळेशी बोलतो आहे म्हटलं मी तर हे सगळं करून सुद्धा ही हॅज ऑर्गनाइज सच अ वंडरफुल कॉन्फरन्स नाव आय एम व्हेरी शुअर यू टेल इम ए डे अर्लियर ही विल ऑर्गनाइज नाव अँड आय एल सी दॅट ही विल ऑर्गनाइज वर्ल्ड कॉन इन सोलापूर इन अ डे इन अ डे आय एल टेल यू फरगेट अबाउट एनिथिंग एल्स अर्लियर डे आय एल टेल यू नेक्स्ट डे ही विल ऑर्गनाइज वर्ल्ड कॉन ऑल्सो वेअर इन लास्ट वर्क ऑन more than 1000 delegates were there and 450 fellows were there to accept our convocation and uh, for workshop people were there more than 800 can you imagine this was the story i'm i'm just telling what iscp is doing my friends our aim is you know to whatever we have knowledge we want to pour down and give to all if you have something more than us we want to learn from you this is our attitude and this is if you keep in one mind that this all we are doing for the public if this you keep in mind then public will not forget you at all any time and whatever dr gatore his friends and his team they work everything simplified everything what was difficult all lectures all travelings everything has been made them by them very very easy you are seeing every time food and other thing so fancy no you have a local taste to the people that is the our motto now you go anywhere in that part we have taste of the local and that's what he has given this time i think we should appreciate it was sola puri jhaika for all the food you know we we, we liked it we it's not like that you know we i just praise it but i like it not only i my all colleagues they like it and will remember this is something called shola puri another thing i like from shola puri is the seng chutney i think everybody will say yes yes that is there so we will have that thing and uh, whatever he has arranged i think i should appreciate from my heart not i i represent my association international society of coloproctology and our aim is that to be with you people and nobody of the person who will you know talk something he is president so he is high no no everybody is like you we are also learner let me tell you very frankly you will see ye taiyar kiya wo taiyar kaya naya procedure nikal nothing i learn it from you only from your mistakes you are not realize your mistake i realize your mistake so i learn it more now every opportunity of doing mistake don't lose it make it mistake after doing mistake you will know what you have done it and if you realize that mistake you will develop something new that's what i'm going to tell you request you keep on doing mistakes don't hesitate and don't be afraid of that these mistakes will make you learn more make you innovate something and have all problem now i think if you are all happy and you are eager to have a lunch there only one thing i can say truck pe likhte hain kabhi kabhi malum hai kya likhte hain bachenge to phir aake milenge milte agar main to kahunga aapko milne ke liye zinda rahenge forget about it we declare this program is dr sheroz bank bombay wala
who is a uh, would like to talk he is a good friend and uh, very under all the staff are under his uh, guidance and uh, he has given lot of good cooperation anesthetist has given also good support but none of the person is available thank you very much i request all the huh? certificates are available certificates are available on the counter huh? uh, and join for the food hmm? thank you very much